What is up, ACL Nation? Welcome in to Myrtle Beach. It's championship weekend. Going to start things off with the women's uh, rounders is concluded. So we're going right into bracket play. Joined in the booth by Bernie Nabiers. Bernie, welcome in, man. Yes, sir. Wally, it is another year, my friend. Here we are in Myrtle Beach once again. Hey, it's my first time being here in Myrtle Beach. I got to say, man, this venue is pretty nice. I like it. Day one vibes. Day one vibes in Myrtle. Day one vibes indeed. Let's take a look at how rounders finished off while they're going down and back. Kaylee Hunter with the final round victory over Cheyenne Bubenheim takes down the number one seed. Isabella Soprenit started off 0-1 wow. and defeats Cameron Belvin, who was also 3-0, 22-2, earning her the number two seed. We'll go through the brackets here in just a little bit. These ladies are finishing their down and back. But, but, so. but speaking of the bracket, how about Sam Finley, who had been playing well this year to start, what, 1-3? and three? Just, yeah. just kind of beat up on in rounders. Yeah, so Sam Finley looks like she's coming in as a 17 seed. Number uh, 16 seed is Elizabeth Tennyson. Winner of this one will get the overall number one seed, Kaylee Hunter. So yeah. not exactly where you want to put yourself. Yeah. Congratulations on your win. Yeah, going right into it, you get, uh, you get the number one seed overall. And speaking of, you know, Kaylee Hunter, that group of, of kids kind of from middle North Carolina, they come to Myrtle Beach a lot in the summer to play. So they're pretty familiar. This is almost like home turf for them. And it, at least in the last couple of years, it seems like whomever's on home turf is playing well, especially in the shootouts. So see if that holds true. All right, they got the spin underway. Slick side of the Sam Rye points to Sam Finley. These bad. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Oh, no, ahead. it's all you, Ollie. It's all you. I, I, I've got. I'm my, not used to having help, man. I, I've, I've got my <laughs> smelly cat voice going, so it's all you. These bags are live. <laughs> I'm not used to having help, especially not the, these bags are live guys. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but he, we got uh, Bernie surviving the weekend, I think. If you would have to told me it. when I was 20 some odd years old that I'd be the these bags are live guy, I don't really know what I would have thought about that. We are underway. Elizabeth Tennyson with a f quick four spot. Sam just seems to be a little off. There's no other way to put it. Her game is just not, she's not. Yeah, Not her said, usual self. She was her earlier to the first lady to the court. We said uh, Sam, or I think Trey was like, if Sam Finley wins the whole thing, I'll hop on the mic. And then she's like, not the way I'm throwing today. So. Yeah. And sometimes it happens. You just can't find it, and there it is again. And you can tell she's visibly frustrated. Yeah, so uh, shootout format, Bernie. Single elimination, right? Yeah. It's uh, go time. It is go time, and it's, you know, with a 12-round with a limit, it can get away from you really fast if you're not paying attention. And I want to put you on the spot here, Bernie. I know we had – Oh, my goodness, oh a my five God. spot. All of a sudden, it's 9-0, Tennyson through two rounds. Wow. Yeah, I don't want to put you on the spot, but uh, do you know the broadcast format? Are we record recording today and broadcasting later, or how's this going to work? Uh, I think we played down, I can't remember if we played down to the quarters or the semis, and then that's all tomorrow, if I'm not mistaken. You know who you could ask that would know for sure? I'm, I'm done asking Trey questions. He's, he's, he, he's he literally to your right. He's in the booth. He, he has... He's in the truck, I mean. He has a whole new vibe about him now that he doesn't have responsibilities yeah. since he's de delegated them all oh, to he'll, us. He'll know, though. He'll know. I should know, but I just don't want to. Oh, I know I should know as well. We've had meeting after meeting yeah. after meeting. And I think that's why I don't know is we've had so yeah. many meetings. Talked about it so much that it's like it's a big shot. Another two for Elizabeth. 11-0. We're through three rounds. I mean, there's nine rounds to go, but 11 points is a long way back in nine rounds. Yeah. Sam kind of just looked over here and smiled. She's like, she's at that point now. It's like, no, there's nothing I can can do but well, you never know I'm not vibing today sometimes you know all of a sudden you loosen up because you're like well there's nothing i can do and you loosen up and then you just start throwing darts other matches going on right now cameron belvin up 10 to 2 over deborah odom chelsea hubbard scoring off against vanessa fillingham 5 Ooh. to 4 and maya cup 12 to 6 over allison peters maya cup she's a bulldog Ooh, one off the back there from sam that hurts it hurts I say this would be normally a situation here where Elizabeth might want to go up top, but in shootout format, no, but she she's going to do it anyway. What do you know? This is our first look at Elizabeth. That's going to put Sam on the board, though. Yep. Give her one. Here's a look at Elizabeth going up top where that airmail hits it nicely. Look at you. Sam you got, the, you got the replay fixed? Fixed? What are you talking about? It was <laughs> never wrong. 
It was perfect the entire time. This is going to be the broadcast that just works smoothly from start to finish, Bernie. Other than the fact that I stole your these bags are live. But, but to your to your original question, I do believe that we're playing down to, I know we're playing down to at least quarters, probably semis, and then all of that will be played out tomorrow. There is no broadcast today. Yeah, they got the set ready to go over there, but they got to put the stands in. Yeah, they got all kinds of stuff still to go over there. So if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, but I would be, I'm 99.9% sure I'm correct. Mill deep off the back of the board there. Desperation. She kind of had to, yeah. though. Down 11 to 1. A little, little time out from Elizabeth Tennyson just to kind of take it all in. Like, am I about to take Sam Finley down real quick? Knock her out quick? How, how familiar, familiar are you with Elizabeth Tennyson? So I got to see her last year during the uh, – teams thing, event they had. I think it was a seven-person team event or whatever. Mm -hmm. She played for the Girls Throw 2 squad. Mm -hmm. I believe they went down to the lower bracket. Okay. And she was probably the star on that squad. I think it was Allison Peters and Maya Cup on there as well. But Elizabeth held her own. And I was like, okay, she's got a pretty good shot. Let me see how she could do. And then during the qualifier, she had a nice deep run in the qualifier as well. I believe she's from Maryland. Mm -hmm. But this mm -hmm. is my first time to actually get to watch her through an entire yep. match. Same. Same indeed. On Facebook, she's always holding up the uh, number one finger, but that doesn't really matter hey, Wally, too much compared to Regents. Wally, can we ask everyone uh, listening out there and watching online how how great my voice sounds like this? Hey, let's let's uh, let's go. Let's get the chat involved. The uh, bronchitis Bernie voice is is got to be up there in announcing voices. I need to, I need to know. The question is, how do you think you sound? Because there's a lot of times. I can tell you how I feel. And <laughs> if it sounds anything like I feel, that's not good. Whoever invented bronchitis, that person's got to go. <laughs> Why would you do that? Why would you invent it? Yeah. A little mix of Fergie and Jesus, he says. <laughs> don't, make, don't make him laugh. We'll lose him. Yeah. It's the whole deep breath thing that's bothering me. Bring some cannon. Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time. People everywhere. I love. It's been a while since we've had a big event, Wally. I've, I've missed it. I've missed the opens, so I've missed some of those. It's it's fun for me to get back. And off the back of the board. <laughs> Who we got hugging me? Tornado. Hugs for days. Tornado. Tornado. Oh, there he is. What's up, brother? All right, so 12 to 2. What up, Amish? Got chat involved now. Uh, 12 to what round are we in? Round 8. Wow. It's not out of uh, possibility. No, but uh, Sam's going to need a lot of help. Big mountain for sure. Checking in on the College Cornhole Championship and rounders right now, Landon Crabtree, Chris Fagan, and Steven Saltalamacchia. The top three, Tyler What's Davis and Kimberly Jenkins, Travis Carson, Cole Brewer, Trip Baker, Jake Brannon, and Brent McFarlane. Or Logan. <laughs> yeah, Brent Logan McFarlane, Zoe Gon, and Ethan Myers, all 3-0. and I believe they're only doing four rounds. I think I forgot to switch camera angles, but my bad. Tornado threw me off with a hug. Yeah. Frank Modlin, the number one seed right now with Joe Neistat and Ryan Smith. Find a way, Frank. In the men's division. I guess technically it's the open division, right? It, it would be, yes. But uh, Well, no, it's men's. Two females. It's men's. But the females are playing in their own, in the shootout format, play in their own, their own division. Has it always been that way? In the shootouts, yes. They always do the shootouts at the yeah. same time? Okay. Yeah. So you, you have a choice which one to play in. I don't know why. I don't think so. I think you're, if you're a female, you're playing in the women's oh, division so in shootouts. Females and men? Yeah. Okay. Oh, look at that. Just in the shootouts. You want to know who Elizabeth Tennyson is? That's how you oh, do it. Oh, right and then there's another. And then has an unfortunate fall. Yeah. Uh, that's going to make it 18 to 2. Wow. Look at this airmail from Elizabeth, ultimately collecting all four bags. Because that final one does get the drip. Yep. Pretty good shot, huh? Not bad. First. First match in bracket play. 
Yeah, 18 to 2. Sam might not even make it through the end of round or the uh, round limited format. Mm. I got to say that's a little shocking to me. No, I don't know your thoughts on it, but that seems a little shocking to Definitely me. Definitely shocking. I, if I saw this match on paper, I'm taking Sam Finley all day. Well, I mean, ultimately, I got Sam Finley as my number right? one female in the world this I year. I know. So. I remember you saying that. That's why I was wondering. So it seems like it's all. I, said, know, I think that's it. Isn't yeah, it? almost all over but the crying here. Yeah. And that will. You know, I think there's one more round for gonna, the PPR. Yeah, going to play it out for the PPR. I guess no. Don't worry. Round eleven. So we got two rounds. Two rounds. Still got a shot. Well, there it goes. There it goes. Well, you know, one thing you can say about Elizabeth is she didn't let Sam's play distract her, and that can happen sometimes if someone's playing not their best next to you. You can kind of get lost in that and I mean, start kind of following them away from holes and off the back. and You know what I mean? I mean, this is huge for Elizabeth right here. Not only does she – now she gets Kaylee Hunter, but she's got a great warm-up game against Sam Finley. Got to build your confidence. Sure. You got to feel pretty good about yourself if you're Elizabeth Tennyson. I imagine she'll be right back here on the broadcast court. Bernie, I'm going to go through brackets real quick. Yes, sir. take a break. Yes, sir. But uh, you see there, Kaylee Hunter will now take on Elizabeth Tennyson. Cameron Belvin comes in as the uh, eight seed after going 3-0 and to start off rounders. Thanks. Defeating Deborah Odom. She'll get the winner of Kaylee and Elizabeth. Bottom portion of the bracket, Miranda Coy, the four seed, will take on either Vanessa or Chelsea Hubbard. That's, That's a good match. Court two. Yep. Maya Cup and Rosie Streaker getting ready to square off on court number seven. Rosie finishes at the five spot. I believe that's it, yeah. So other I think there's side another the side. Bracket. Yep. Okay. Daniela Luna finishes look at, the Look at Kimberly seed. Glass just putting the smack down on Megan Moffitt. Yeah, Kimberly, we saw her. I think she went one and three. So How about, la- how about uh, former ladies doubles world champions Cheyenne and Sarah squaring off? Enemies now, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, Bella Soprenant coming in as the overall number two wow. seed. Nicole Pratt, that's a big win over Connie Altais. It is. And Nicole making her uh, pro debut as well, I believe. Look at Lori and Christine Papke all knotted up at 10. Is Christine back? We'll see. Uh, you know what? It would be awesome. I don't know if she has the power in her game to play nowadays. Does that make sense? That's a good point. We'll see. Well, we have another match assigned to us. We'll take a commercial break. We'll see who it is here in just a second. Be back here in just a few, guys.
All right, ladies and girls, boys and gentlemen, welcome back to court number one. We're That's get one way to do it. Bella and Nicole, you got to do it different. If you do it the same way, <coughs> and people get bored. You got some, it looks like BG on BG action coming to the main court. Did you, did you see that sly little look from Bella? She talked about how nervous she was. I don't think she wants to be on she this court. She was visibly shaking after the first round of rounders, losing, going 0-1, coming back, earning the number two spot. I think she's got the nerves worked out. But this is Nicole Pratt's this is a debut. Big, this is a big – it's early. We're just breaking out the rookie females now. It's, it's early, but I would say this is a big match for Nicole. It is, definitely. Winner of this one will get Christine Papke as Christine takes down Lori Duell there 12-10. to 10. It's got uh, confirmation from Trey. The men's division is finishing up round three. Yep. Of oh, and by the way, we are playing down to the championship match today in women's singles, just yep. just so in case anyone was wondering. Oh, we got some side action in the chat going already. I love it. I love the side action, man. Is that right? I do. Just just the place your bets, place your bets aspect. Place your bets. So who do you like here? I mean, I... I mean, if you talk to me about rounders, Isabella was just on fire. But, you know, Nicole has been around for a while as a player. But, I mean, if we're being honest, maybe not at this level. Yeah, I got to say, after one game, um, if we were to start off after the first round, there's no way I would take Bella at all, period. But right. seeing her fire back and then finishing off 22-2 to two in the final round of rounders to earn the number two seed. I am going to go ahead and And she was her. playing Cameron Belvin, who she's very familiar playing with, and I think that helps. I mean, they're part of the Brad Pack Cornhole group. Yeah. They play all the time together, so, I mean, that comfortability there kind of frees her up. I would say she would probably struggle more in this match than that match, if, if that's possible. So Nicole puts her first bag in, then she decides to breathe afterwards. <laughs> but the nerves are going to be a factor. Let's see if she could... Staring at two right yeah. off the bat. I like Submerged that them down so far. She's staying right down the middle. It's going to be fun to watch Bella play because one of the few women that play kind of a dirtier style right there. Example, tried to get over, but give Nicole two right off the jump. And how long do you think it's going to be, or will it ever change in the women's game to where you get more dirty style players like a Miranda Coy, Bella Soprinet, and a few others? Um, I think we're I think we're there. I think this is going to be the year. Actually, it's going to be pretty muddy. A lot of the girls are thrown to the stickier bag. I mean, looking at the BG roster, BG pretty much owns the female division. Right. I would probably say 40% of the females this year are throwing BG. Now, BG has a wide line, so yeah. there's some faster bags out there now. But a BG, stickier but brand, if, if so to speak. Yeah. That, I mean, my first thought when I think of BG is the Viking, which is a stickier bag. Well, um, here's a chance. Even it up. And she does. But, yeah, I think, I think we're pretty much at that point. We're not going to get too many high PPRs other than the Ultra Girls. The Ultra Girls. Well, Rosie, what's Rosie throwing? BG. Okay. I think she's right. throwing Dark Slide 2.0. Yeah. So. I mean, she's still going to be a. She's still going to. She's fast a, bag. Yeah. Well, yeah, two to two, round three. 12 rounds for bracket action. Other matches. Getting ready to start. Cheyenne Bubenheim, 9-0 over Sarah Cassidy. Megan Moppin falls to Kimberly Glass. So now Kimberly will take on Daniela Luna. I believe Kimberly's still an ultra girl. Daniela switching over to Black Sheep this year. Chelsea Hubbard coming back and getting that win against Vanessa Fillingham. Hmm. Yeah, the winner of that will play either Maya Cup or Rosie Streaker. Currently, Rosie's up 10-2. And Rosie's one of those players, especially in the shootouts, man, because she's going she's gonna to put bags in the hole. If you have a couple of bad rounds against her, all of a sudden you're down four. Right. Yeah, it looked like uh, I think who, I can't remember who Rosie was playing. I think it was playing against Cheyenne. Uh, Rosie had a chance to go up top for an airmail, decided not to go for it, and went in a slick side bag, trying to cut around it. So kind of leads me to believe she's going to play kind of conservative today. 
watching that bag from Bella was like she pulled the string on that one. She knew it wasn't where she wanted it as soon as same with Nicole there. They both kind of would like to have those two bags back. Yeah, round limited format kind of brings out a different style of play. It almost seems like you're just waiting till round seven or eight yeah. before you make your move. Uh, Justin, I don't believe we have any sit and goes going just yet. We're still finishing off rounders for the men's division as well as the college division. It's another wash. Is that three or four washes in a row now? I believe so. All tens, right? Ten, ten, yes, ten, sir. Ten. Yes, sir. Uh oh. Someone's bringing in the camera. We got press. We got press, Wally. Oh, man. I feel like I have a booger right now, too. <laughs> Only three. All right. Feel good. Look good. Feel good. Play good. Sound good. Smelly cat. Smelly cat. What up, Ashlyn? How you doing? Welcome in. This is the second match. We are in round two of bracket play. You're going to play down to the final two females. Bella comes in as the two seed. We're just tuning in. Nicole Pratt making her ACL Pro debut. Doing so far pretty well. Oh, she's trying to sneak that around. That was a great bag. Nicole goes right through it. Solid. Tell you what, I've been watching the talk ticks. Nicole Pratt putting in the work. She's practicing. Ah, just came across it a little bit. Bella sneaks out in front 4-2. Tell you what, shout out to Bella for working the tablet very well. You know. Well, you know the kids. Definitely not the, the, the seniors division here. Yeah, the kids love the tablets. But shout out to everybody tuning in on Facebook, YouTube, or ACL TV, wherever you're at. Even appreciate all the comments from all the hackers out there. If you guys see a link, do not click on that link. It might be bad. There's really no link that you need to click on in the comment section. If you guys are looking for the brackets, you can go to iplaycornhole.com on the right-hand side. Click on what they call the hamburger. Scroll <laughs> down to the news, and you should be able to see the brackets there. Actually, yep. I think they got their own tab now. So just scroll down to open number six. Get the bracket tab. And should you see the shootout stuff. So. Here's a chance for Nicole to get some points back. In for minimum of two, and it is. Tell you what, man, it's been a long time since Monday, and I can't remember who we had as our players to watch, but Tyler Poitras looks pretty good so far. Pretty good player. He's a pretty good player for a long time. Like you wonder, being away from the game for a year, was he really away from the game or he just wasn't traveling? You know what I mean? I kind of feel like it's the, the Philip Hayden thing. Like, I'm just not going to be as deeply involved as I was, so I'm still going to throw. Yeah, agreed. Kaylee Hunter up 17-3 to three over Elizabeth Tennyson. And winner of that gets Cameron Belvin. Chelsea Hubbard up 2-0 over Miranda Coy. And Rosie Streaker now 12-6 over Maya Cup. So Miranda Coy is really mad at me, by the way. So, why is that? Uh, Jeff and I on Borderline had uh, Lori Duell, her partner, on. Mm -hmm. And she came over kind of barking at me like, why did you get her first? Why not me? And so jokingly, I said, because she's a better interview which I thought was funny. She apparently did not. Well, I got <laughs> I got on the Miranda Coy list last year because I said that she's Lori Duell's tail. So you could have piggybacked off of that and just been like, the tail always follows the body. <laughs> so. Yeah. so she's not very happy with me. Miranda Coy kind of uh, likes the spotlight, though. She does indeed. Just a little bit. Got a timeout here from Bella. She's going to look at this pile. It's going to be kind of interesting. I'm colorblind, so I'm not much help as far as whose bag is what there in that situation, Bernie. I think, I mean, Bella's got one in the back that'll go if she hits the airmail, but be careful of the trampoline here. Or else she's going to go through it all. Well, everything fell except for the one in her hand, so I don't know what happened. And it was almost like a trampoline the way that it kind of bounced off. That would, that would be the one worry. And put Nicole up 5-4. What round are we in? Round number nine, getting ready to start. Wow. Or no, maybe round eight. Looks like it updated already. That's the thing, though, with Bella, man. Bella's working that tablet so quick. You usually have to kind of wait for the delay. Do we actually got music going? Uh, I believe there's some by, there's a, an adult beverage station to our left okay. that I believe has some I can, music I can going. hear it in the headset, but I can't hear yeah. it when I take off the headset. Are you a music in the background kind of guy for these cornhole tournaments? I or do, you like, do you like the... I, I'm a, I have a... I would, 
I'm a poster child for adult deficit disorder, attention deficit disorder. So I need noise. I need kind of lots of stuff going on to kind of make my brain relax. And I know that sounds crazy. But the more quiet it is, the louder my brain is. I could I could actually pick up on that. Mm. I, I, Give Nicole I feel another too. very relaxed in Vegas, which is probably <laughs> one of the most entertaining and busiest places to be. But Vegas Strip is relaxing to me. Vegas isn't necessarily relaxing, but... I don't know. By the way, what round are we in? Nine? Round nine. This is a big four. moment. I think if Nicole is, Nicole just, you know, you're up three here. It's kind of what we're talking about, just waiting around to see who's going to strike and what round they're going to do it in. You know, just, I mean, Bella's got to start putting bags in the hole. Nicole's starting to take some deep breaths, though. I'm yeah. wondering if she's oh, starting sure. to feel the victory before you get to the victory, you know? <laughs> That's kind of my biggest downfall is I start thinking about winning, and then I have a blow-up round. Well, Nicole hasn't been here many times before, which is to say not ever, really. Yeah, so this is her first shootout. Yeah, so. I like that bag. I think oh, she's going to try to run up on it. You know. Anyone know where the doubles bracket is or where to find it? Doubles is not even close yet. And we're, yeah, we're, we're working long, singles. a long way away from doubles. Time out for Bella to go take a look. Here's where... I don't know, man. I think she's in trouble in this round. I don't think that she can get anything out of it unless she hits a hero shot, but we'll see. I can't quite see from the overhead what's there. I don't have the overhead view here. Yeah, it's – I can't see color, so I think it's two red and one gold in the back. So the gold's Bella's, and that roll on top doesn't take anything. But I think she was just trying to get the bag in her hand to go. I don't think she was able to get her bag on the back without taking those. She grabbed two, through. though. She was able to get two, so make it 7-6 going into round 10. So three rounds remain. Nicole just needs to stay steady, right? Just stay steady. Don't worry about where you are. Don't worry about what round you're in. Just stay steady. And Bella, I think, could play it. She can pick it up. We'll see if Bella picks up her play just a little bit here. I think Bella wanted that bag to be a blocker. It went in, and she didn't look exactly <laughs> happy with it. Bella's starting to get a little off balance here. Uh, that one. Looks like Bella's pressing just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Nicole, very good round so far. See if she can finish it off. It's only round 10. I don't think Bella has to go after that. Yep. Yeah, solid right down Good the middle. Round. Get those two back. Make it nine, six. Two rounds remain. What do you think? I like the composure from Nicole. What do you think? I'm, I'm putting you on the spot. Who wins? I'm going to go with Nicole right now. All I right. feel like Bella is almost I, – I think they both are in their head about this. I think they both are trying to make a statement win. Yep. But I think Bella's the one that wants it a little bit more, and she's putting a little bit too much pressure on. She's feeling bag. the pressure because remember how I said talk, playing against Cameron, she felt comfortable. Mm -hmm. I felt she would feel different in this match because she would be the the favorite, right? You yep. you would consider her the favorite in this match, and I think she's struggling with that. Yeah, at this point, Nicole though, she's got to be counting down eight, seven, six, yep. five. Just yep. count down the bags left. Yeah, just find your spot, make bags, just like you do every day at home, right? Perfect. Right through, just like that. And here's a big moment that for Nicole. That is a huge breath of fresh air for Nicole. And she will finish to collect a couple you go more up points. Five. You go up five with one round to play. I mean, you got to feel good. I don't think there's a Oh, no. That's even more. Four Make more it points. seven. Make it a seven-point lead for Nicole Pratt going into the last round. Wow. Bella's. Not very pleased. But, yeah, Nicole's composure, though. I, yes. I like what I'm seeing out of her. She took a breath after her first bag went in the hole in round one. And then she did it, uh, I think, in round nine or ten. But for the there most part, she doesn't seem to be showing any expression, good, bad, whatever. She's staying in her element, yeah. staying in her zone. This bag's in. It's over. Bella, on the other hand, definitely feeling the, the moment. Yep, Nicole is going to be moving on. So impressive win for Nicole Pratt. 
How about tell you that? What, Nicole is actually staying right down the middle yeah. too, even with these bags that don't matter. Yeah, when she got she got dialed in in the last three rounds, so good for her. All right, Nicole, there you go. Welcome in. Before we do a commercial, let's go ahead and check out the uh, men's rounders. I believe they are finished. Frank Modlin, does he does he ever just does he disappoint ever? He does not. So we got uh, Modlin and Cheyenne teaming up this weekend for doubles. If he's throwing like that and she yeah. throws how she throws, that's it's trouble. That should have been a team to look out for, you know. Yeah. Somebody should have put them on a the list. Someone should have. Joe Neistad, Ryan Smith, Timmy Jonas, Devin Harbaugh, Fisher Hamilton. One, once Matt again, Guy. Ryan Smith is a shootout machine. So far, so good. Plus 47 there. Earns the three seed. Matt Guy, Logan Chamberlain, Jamie Graham, Kyle Malone. Kayla Batson, there's my guy, Ryan Wiedenfeld, 3 0. Jordan Powers, Steve, Zach, Mark, Ashton, Trey Birchfield, all 3 0. Only doing three rounds there, but that's pretty much how things shake out. Frank Modlin earns the number one spot, plus 67. It's pretty good. 67 point differential in three games is pretty good. It's a lot. All right, guys, commercial break. We'll be back here in a little bit. We'll see what we got next. I believe uh, we're down to the final, what, 12 females? Getting down uh, to the Got to be close. Got to be close. All right, see you guys in a little bit. All right, ACL Nation, welcome back in. We are going to take a look at the uh, brackets uh, here in just a second, but let's take a quick look at the college rounders as they head into round number five. Landon Crabtree, four rounds in. He's up uh, plus 89 in the point differential. We're getting down to the uh, final few rounds here. Still in the undefeated portion, Landon Crabtree, Steven Saltlamacchia, Tyler Davis, Chris Fagan, Cole Brewer, and Zoe Gahn. By might, the way, might recognize a few of those names on my list of players. Saltalamakia, what a great last name! Wasn't there a professional baseball player? Yeah, Jared Saltalamakia played right. for Boston as a catcher. That's right. The longest names in the league during that time. It's a fun one to say, though. I liked it. He was on my fantasy team quite a bit. Saltalamakia, just even, fun. Who, who came over and just shook my hand? I don't even know who it was. Oh, I wasn't paying attention. I was trying. <laughs> I was trying to get good. back. I got caught up in the uh, little boys' room. Whoever you are, hello. I didn't get to see you. <laughs> Uh, we got uh, Pat doing? Groff says he put twenty dollars on Cheyenne and Frank pays out four sixty. Finally allowed to bet in New Jersey. There you go. I'm trying to take Let's over go. all fifty. Let's go. All fifty before the end of this year. Over. Ooh. Ooh, wow. Nah, Tough. I don't know about that. Yeah. No. 
But uh, bagging and bragging, new show out there. We will start talking about these lines. We did our oh my god! Look, look at the week. shameless plug. Shameless. Well, hey, it's ACL. It's not like I'm saying go to K9Cornhole.com and I mean, purchase a new awkward knuckle shirt. You know, haven't even talked about borderline yet, except for the last game. I threw it in there. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, we're plugging our own shows. You know, numbers galore, folks. But, yeah, we're going to start looking at the uh, betting lines a little bit more. We we did our pre-recording, and then later on that night, they announced this, the betting lines. We're like, oh, man. Like, the whole reason the show was invented. Cole I, Brewer is a stud. I like uh, I like that. I like that. I like that we're getting deeper and deeper. How many states now do you know off the top of your head? I can't remember. It's like 38, 32. Oh, that much? I thought so. I thought it was 18, so that's, yeah. that's awesome if it is. Oh, wrong, wrong screen. Don't look behind the curtain, I can't, folks. Yeah, pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. All right, back at bracket action. Cheyenne Bubenheim finishes off Sarah Cassidy. We got Kimberly Lass up 6-4 to four over Lalu, top part of the bracket. Nicole Pratt upsets Isabella Soprenant. How, how about so either Christine Papke or Nicole Pratt is going to be in this? Uh-oh. Kaylee Hunter has, has stepped in the building. Kaylee's got one of those, I wasn't trying to smile, but I can't hold it in. Right, face. always. She'll be taking on Cameron Belvin here on the other side of the bracket. Winner of this gets to the final four to take on either Miranda Coy or Rosie Streaker. Nice run from Miranda. As we mentioned, we are going to be giving you guys a cornucopia of cornhole. Wow. Wow. College, men's, women. Wow. Bernie, Jeff, Everyone. Maybe Trey. Stacy looks like he's kind of chomping at the bit to get on the mic, too. You know, he, he, he loves it. Where'd he go? They all left us. Got to shake hands and kiss babies, you know? Yeah. That's what happens when you're big time. So here we are. Cheyenne's kind of, I mean, uh, Cameron's kind of, I don't know if, I don't know if disinterested is the look or, or is that just extreme focus from her? I can't tell. Yes. <laughs> I'm going with yes. Yeah. Probably tired. Where yeah. were they yesterday? Were they in? Did, do they travel and play a lot? What in the world, man? You see, I couldn't tell if they uh, were on the road or if they were local playing somewhere. Hey, 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 our, uh, hey where were you guys at yesterday? Were you here? Cameron's uh, bags. Are they pink? At the bar. Huh? At the bar? In South Carolina? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, they, they were, were here. Last night. Okay. What time did you guys get done? So Wally's just talking on air. He's just talking. I'm casual, man. You know, He's I got, casual. I got no wood behind me. We're on, we're on air, man. Did you watch no Bagging and Did you watch no big deal. Bragging yesterday? No. I got like a Noah Wooten highlight reel yesterday. Noah Wooten's jumped in, he jumped in backstage. Yeah, new show. It's my new show that I did. He's, 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 he's plugging it for everyone, even though we're online. It's on YouTube. What is it, YouTube channel? Mm-hmm. Oh, man, no, we got to get you working on the Internet. we got to get Bella teaching you how to work tablets. Google the YouTube. But, uh, we got Cameron throwing the Blitz bags. Those are the pinkest bags I think I've ever seen. Can't tell what Kaylee's throwing. Can you, can you with your color blindness, can you tell how pink those are? Pepto. Oh. They look Pepto. It's matching the outfit, though. I think these bags are live, my friend. Give us one time. Let's see how you're doing. Kaylee Hunter, Cameron Felvin. Ladies, these bags are live. Let's go. Cersei coming in says vengeance. So they got done with the uh, tournament last night about 2.30, he said. Yikes. So, yeah, she probably just tired. I was dead asleep at 2.30 last night. Dude, I, I got in... After 17 and a half hours of travel. Did you drive straight? Oh, no. We stopped in Louisville. Nico and Stephanie finished the rest of the way. So, like, I got an hour of sleep on Monday into Tuesday. And I felt I figured I'd be really tired. So, I got to Louisville. You drove through Louisville? Yeah. From Kansas City. So, I stopped in Alton. Got the kiddo her passport for her trip coming up with my mom. We were going to Panama. Stopped in Louisville. Had about four and a half hours. I figured I'd be able to sleep. No. Hour of sleep. Wow. Then I hopped in the car. We drove. I got about 30 minutes here and there um, with Stephanie and Nico driving from Louisville all the way in. And then last night, went to sleep at like 7.45, 8 o'clock yeah. after setup. Woke up at midnight. 
Mm. I just cannot sleep. I don't get it. I've I've had those days. Take were you were you up the PM? rest of the night? No, I watched an episode or two of Yellowstone and then finished watching Amsterdam. Hmm. I've been trying to watch that movie for a while, but uh, I fell back asleep probably about three thirty. Woke up at seven thirty. Disappointing reviews for Amsterdam, unfortunately. Big shot. Kaylee Hunter's on it. I think Amsterdam pulled off exactly what they were going for. They're going I for wanted to older see it. vibe. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, it just got crushed. I mean, the critics are panning it. Yeah. Rotten Tomatoes looking at like a 30. Oh, short airmail knocks in the wrong bag. This is a big, big round for Kaylee. Lead change. Miranda Coy up quick. 3-0 on Rosie Streaker on the other side of the bracket. Or we're actually on this side of the bracket. Winner, winner of that match takes on the winner of this match. I guess I haven't made my pick yet. It's kind of a little bit late, but after that victory with Cheyenne, I was going to take Kaylee anyway. I'm big on Kaylee this year. I don't know why. Because she's got all the talent. It's, not, it's, it's got nothing to do with her skill set. It's all between the ears. Yeah. I, I, could, I could probably vouch for that. But she's about to give up a big number here. And that's probably that one's probably on me. This brown's probably on me. This yeah. I Jinx, it. welcome to it. I was a Jinx machine in this building last year. In for a six. Boom. Make it seven two, Belvin. But yeah, I think Amsterdam though. Um, going back to the movie. Yeah, review, back to back to the important stuff. The place that took what was it the sixties or thirties or. Amsterdam, I think, is in the 20s and 30s. 20s and 30s. So, so yeah, back then, it wasn't like it is now where a, a crime happens and then everyone's involved, cops, lawyers, there's just so much action. Like, back then, it was like, oh, he said, she said, okay, we'll arrest you when we get around to it. You know what I mean? And There was, a, there was some and, of that. And he, it was just kind of like a drug-out process that I think a lot of people would have problems you with. You didn't have the forensics that you have today. I believe that mm -hmm. is correct. Yeah, so it was... It's just a different crime story drama, you know. I can't say I would recommend people to watch it, but I don't I, necessarily think I like his favorite. movies. I believe Alexander Payne was the director there, also the writer. I'm a big fan of his movies, but uh, it's just it's unsettling to see the reviews. I'll just say that. I see Kaylee stepping off the line there, kind of unsettled with yeah, the score. Nine, two. Nine, two, you, two she's five been, she's been ruling the day and all of a sudden finds herself in big trouble. What round are we in? Round number five. Yeah, she's got to make something happen here in the next couple of rounds or it's going to start getting testy. She's going to need some help from Cameron as well. She's got one on the back of the board. Still on, but not necessarily what she's looking for. Kaylee trying to finish off this round to collect two and get back first throw. And we'll see if she can manufacture some points. By the way, how is the new season of Yellowstone? I haven't seen it yet. I'm on uh, season three. Oh, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm catching up. You're catching I, I don't up? even know how many seasons are total. Yeah, I haven't seen any of the new season. I, I believe it's season watching. five is the new season. It's kind of a running joke. I don't know why. I There's two. Well, I, I guess I can't really talk because that character might be dead by now. <laughs> so I don't want to make myself out sound stupid, but I just kind of developed this hatred for a character for no reason. You know what I mean? Uh-oh. And I was just like, this guy's an idiot. And... Uh, it's almost a running joke. Even if he doesn't warrant it, I still say, idiot. Idiot. <laughs> idiot. Yeah, Yellowstone, I'm not going to lie. I didn't think I'd be able to get into it. I, I'm, I'm digging it. I was that I'm way fun. I was that way a little bit, but I, I, I really enjoy it. I'll tell you what show is actually really good, if, especially if you were a Breaking Bad fan. Mm -hmm. Better Call Saul is a great show. I got two seasons in on that, and then I was kind of done. Yeah? I love it. It, it, it. Like, Breaking Bad started slow and got really good. I feel like... Uh, better call Saul was still kind of slow season three. Ooh, another big round all of a sudden. I also didn't make move. Make it nine, eight. I did move around that time frame, too, so I didn't get a chance to carry over. Look at Miranda Coy up 13-0 on Rosie Streaker. She's feeling it. Other side, how about Christine Papke? 11-6 to six over Nicole Pratt right wow. now. Wow. Wow. Throwing a 10. Six rounds in. Bottom half of the bracket, Kimberly Glass over Daniela Luna, 11-10. to 10. That'll probably be the next match here on the broadcast, Kimberly Glass and Cheyenne. Wow, but, all right, so hold on. In this match, both ladies are just all over the place right now. Both of them are in their own heads. They can't find the line. I mean, look at the board. 
That is. Different expressions there as well. Yeah. Cameron's just like, come on. Kaylee, on the other hand, getting upset, kind of like we saw from Bella earlier. It's another miss. I mean, she just they're both just struggling with their line. This is a big bag. And for points. She will get two. Makes it 11 to 8. 11 to 8. What round again? Round number 8. Still time. Five rounds. Uh, for those of you guys trying to watch on the digital network, there's a huge revamp going on for the digital network. It's it's kind of hard and too technical to explain, but there are big things in the works for the future of cornhole and viewing purposes. And in order to make all that happen, we kind of have to rebuild and start from scratch. So Big doings. If the uh, digital network does not work for you, you guys can always follow on YouTube, Facebook, as well as ACL TV. Ooh, big bag from Kaylee chance to get four and take the lead if she can get this in. <laughs> do, do not read Trey Hunt's comment if you guys don't want spoilers, whether it's true or not. This man just coming in, dropping bombs. Here, what do you think about spoilers? Do they do you talking watching? about shows? No. Yeah. yeah I, 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 think, I, I, I think still it's, watch it. I think it's not I mean, pretty... It's not a very cool thing to do, but... Yeah, Trey. But, yeah, I... Uh, I'm at the point where it's like if, if somebody says something's going to happen, I'll still watch it. Oh, yeah, for sure. It's not going to deter me. Yeah, I want to see how they go about exactly. it. Exactly. 11-10, what a game. Round number nine. Kaylee again coming across the front. Had a little struggle with that the last few rounds. Cameron just slamming four, it in. Did I say four? Yeah, four brackets for men's action. No, Looks like those brackets, brackets are getting made, so we'll go through a uh, bracket make it, breakdown here in a little bit. Make it 13-10, Belvin going into round number 10. Three rounds remain. Who do you like? Three rounds to go, Belvin up three. I'm still going to go Kaylee. Wow. I don't know how, but we've seen sixes from sure. both these ladies. I mean, it's sure. not possible to take a four out of the I mean, it's, equation. Considering how they've both been a little off, you never know. Cameron may be finding the line, might be getting dialed in now. That's a good, that's a good bag. See what she does with it. Going behind, good smart. I was just going to say, she's got to step out and kind of bully that and collect yeah. two points here. These are huge two points. Yep. It's a massive shot right here in this game, round 10. Coming in hot, just hops on her. Does Cameron go up? I don't necessarily mind it. I don't think Cameron has a reason to go up here. I would just go board. Worst case scenario, you give up two. There you go. And that's what she does, and that's the exact wrong no, thing. She went, she went push. In for a tie game. Oh, and she left it short. She pulled the string on it, left it short. Wow. Both ladies feeling the pressure right now, Wally. There's no other way to say it. I, I did not see that round coming that way. I, I mean. 11th round. I don't think Cameron had a reason to push through that pile. To, I mean, I know not she, that wanted, hard, she right? wanted to get two points. Yeah. She got let off the hook. See if she takes advantage of it. Either way, the situation was shaping up for Kayla to get within yeah. two. Well, she could have tied the game right there with mm -hmm. that back. You can feel it. I can feel the tension, Wally. You can feel it. It's this our is first, why first. You love the shootout format. Oh, a short bag from Kaylee. You got to go bloke. Don't bloke. You got to go block here now. I'm reading Ethan's comment and talking. Let's try it. It looked like she was trying to go block and it ends up going in. Cameron left that one a little short, short and left. Kind of held on to it. Kaylee slides. This is a big bag here from Cameron. She can kind of. And she does. Great bag. Give her three. Make it 16 11 going into the final round. That's strong. This is the first time we had a little crowd behind us, by the way. I don't know if you've noticed. 
Got a little, got a little crowd watching this game behind us. Yeah, I feel like we might need more be- more bleachers for tomorrow. Well, it's just tough. Not a lot of room. And that's why we need the uh, double decker couch <laughs> from Lego. <coughs> That one off to the side. I think that's pretty much going to do it. Yep. Would have been difficult to get five points this final round anyway. Well. And we'll be up next, I think is what he just said. Oh, did you hear that? Yeah, Kimberly Glass, I believe. Well, it's a nice airmail. But. Ooh. Wow. <laughs> I'll say, if she would have and won that wow. one, I might have had the possibility. Yeah, can she? There's no way that she can take that bag and knock the other one off. Yeah, she's got a... Can she? Can she land on it? Wow, well, look at my she, hand. She needs the bag on the right, Can too, she though. land on the, on the back left corner of her bag, drag that in, hit the other bag, and then come back in the hole for the greatest and, and one for five? Well, she doesn't need... She's got to get five. I guess that is her only option. That bag on the right, she's definitely out of play. Yeah. That's unfortunate, too, because Kaylee has had a couple opportunities this game. More than a couple. Yeah, for sure. Both both ladies left the door open for their opponent in this match. And if you're Cameron, you really can't be feeling too great about the win anyway, I guess. You got through it. Well. That's going to do it. Missed opportunity wow. there for Kaylee. Cameron Belvin takes that one down. She will advance to the final four ladies. We'll take a commercial break. When we get back, we'll do a little bracket breakdown of the men's division. See you guys in just a few. All right, welcome back, ACL Nation. Here is what we have up next. Cheyenne Bubenheim and Kimberly Glass finishing their down and backs. How about, how about, you know, Kimberly Glass has made some runs, made some runs in some brackets, but this is a obviously a whole other level of competition once you're going up against Cheyenne. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I didn't expect the ladies to make their way to the court this fast. Yeah, they got you. They tricked you. But uh, we'll kind of give you guys a breakdown of how the brackets are going to shake out. We'll kind of look at the one seed. Frank Modlin there, the one seed in the A bracket. How about that? B bracket looks like Joe Neistead earns the number one spot. They're underway. Kobe Costanza 9-1 to one over Matt Mendelson. C bracket, Ryan Smith is in charge. He'll get either Matthew Morton or Terry Mathis. And then D bracket, how Timmy, Timmy Jonas. Jonas. How about Timmy Jonas getting a one seed in the bracket? And there's Jeremiah Hector. So Timmy, to Timmy Jonas and Nicole Pratt having a weekend already. Good for them. Partners. By the way, 
Let's see who's. You, you can say it while I'm, I'm going to let you say it while these bags. These bags are live. I think Ethan Walker picked up Nicole Pratt for open uh, portion of doubles. But here we go. We got some Viper R's going against. Uh, looks like all slides. I believe they're two point I can never tell what's uh -oh. changed. She got that palm tree. Uh, this is not what you wanted to do if you're Kimberly Glass coming out. Oh, she caught a break. Caught a break from Cheyenne. That's a smart. Oh no. That's a four, and it could have. You know, the thing is, it's 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 a four, but it could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse. So in a way, she caught a break. Yeah, Kimberly Glass, definitely the underdog coming into this one. She got a rough, rough uh, fourth bag there in front of the board. But like you said, only four points. She's got to breathe a little breath of fresh air. I mean, that could have been a huge number. And it probably should have been an eight, quite frankly. Well, Cheyenne misses again left. Kind of let her take a breath, maybe get two of them back. Or more. Yeah, Cheyenne's throw is just effortless, but she's... Let's see. Let's see if she gets out of this round. Oh. Well, that was weird. Does Kimberly get one there? Is it two? No. She went off? No, yeah, she, she knocked kind of uh, an and half there. Yeah, I was getting the uh, brackets ready to break down, and then I saw the uh, the real talent of the ACL to our left there. Anthony Ione was making his way in the building. Ah. The professor. Hey, what? Oh, man, I've Kim been doing a terrible job of writing down these matches. Kimberly has survived that first that first round and has a chance to kind of stay in the match now. I mean, that, that first round could have been, probably should have been an eight, even though it was four. And she's been able to survive it. I thought that last bag was going to get hung up a little bit, but it uh, did not. So who, who do we have our second match on the broadcast? Do you remember? Fred was saying set up good. Huh. Was that, that Bella and Nicole? Thought. Was that not the first one? Because Tennyson and Finley was the first Yeah, one. so it was Bella and Nicole. Okay. Man. Uh, no, John, not playing this weekend, man. Just uh, doing the commentating. I will be actually playing Wally. against uh, Trey and Anthony. Wally's a busy man this weekend. Be teaming up with. Oh, good bag from Kimberly there. Jake Brandon take that one down. And then Cheyenne doing what Cheyenne does. She does make those collects look so easy. It's insane. And I think that's what it is for me. It's like, you know, you watch. All these folks can do it. The way she does it just makes it look so simple. And I guess it is when you're that good. It's a big moment for Kimberly Glass. Like I said, a million times already survived a disastrous round one and is still in it. Still got a chance. Haven't had a chance to check out any of that lower left part of the bracket, but Rosie Streaker takes down a Miranda Coy. She came back. Wow. She was once down 10 0 in that match. Yeah, final two rounds. She was down 17 to 12, came back with a 10 on 8 to get two, and then a 12 on 6. Yikes. In the final round to win by one. Yikes. Wow. Wow, that's that's a, impressive for Rosie and unfortunate for Miranda. I feel like we've had more than three matches, but I guess that's all we've had. Yeah, it's it hasn't been much. It's been it's only been an hour. Feels like more. Feels like longer because you're with me. <laughs> Feels like I've been here for four days. <laughs> <coughs> Still four one. Every now and then I, get, I just get caught watching. I know we're supposed to be talking, but I just got, kind of got caught watching there for a little bit. Oh. 
Unfortunately, people don't like listening to us that much. That's all right. We just make. I like forcing nice. them to. Yeah. Yeah. Words in your ear holes. Yeah. Take it. Still remains four one. What up, Brody? So, Bernie, last year the draft it was his own thing, right? We didn't piggyback it with any event. No, it was its own thing. Yeah. What do you What do you think about piggybacking it with the event? I think it's awesome. I think it, it makes. More? I think it creates. You know, essentially, what is now the second biggest weekend of the year. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked, man. Um, it's a long day. Nice shot. It's going to be a long day for those people announcing. <laughs> and unfortunately, on the other side of that, though, Cheyenne just effortlessly puts that final bag in. But it's still four one. What round are we in? Uh, I'm taking just a second. Look at the sneak around shot from the camera. Oh, there it is. Great oh. job. Just getting enough of it to go. We are entering round number eight, four to one. Just remains four to one. I saw somebody comment in the chat earlier. Who cares about that first round? I'll tell you right now, without that first round, Kimberly's up one nothing. Yeah, exactly. It could be very important. This is pretty much it, man. Women's bracket's almost done. I know. We're, we're playing down to the finals, so we're almost there. And we have three of the final four decided. Christine Papke, Cameron Belden, Rosie Streaker. Wow, Cheyenne let her off the hook again, so it's another wash. How many washes is that? 75. That's a lot of washes. Yeah, so I'm doing this new thing where uh, we're trying to get the digital network a little bit easier to, like, search for matches. So I have to write down the names of each match that's happening. Ooh, Cheyenne, that's So I can title it. And I, yeah. keep, I keep forgetting. I'm sitting here watching this match, and I, I forgot to write it down. By the way, this match is getting interestingly close. That yeah, bag in the front of the board is pretty much out of play. Kimberly, great job going over the top of it. She's got at least two here. See if she can go over the top of it again. She does. It's a big bag. Gives up two. It's 4-3. That's why that first round was so massively important to get away with just four. Anybody's, anybody's game now. Yeah, you never know when you're going to get your opportunities to get on the board. Four to three. Down to the final three rounds here. Winner of this gets Christine Papke. Wow. Christine. I mean, the way Rosie's been throwing this last couple weeks. Yeah. I almost feel like this is the Rosie show, and we're all just enjoying the ride. Uh, I think it depends. I think it depends if. Uh oh. I would love to see Rosie and Cheyenne. Kimberly in the Glass take over. the lead right here. I was just going to say, Kimberly, not going to hand it to her. She brings that bag a little bit closer. Does Can she, she help get that her? corner? Oh, oh, oh. She's she looks, stepping out. Kimberly looks up in the sky like, I can't believe I just did that. And but she gets two. We have a lead change. I am surprised she did not try and go up top there. If not, just to make the bag in her hand and keep the lead. Two rounds remain. Five, four, glass. I think that might have been a missed opportunity for Cheyenne in round 11. Is this round 11? This is round 11. That's what I thought. <laughs> Nate says, okay, maybe the first round was important. It's a pretty big deal. It should have been an eight. It was just a four, and because of that, she now has the lead. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Another opportunity presents itself for Cheyenne here. In to retake the lead. And she does. And you know what Cheyenne does better than all the other ladies at this point? When? Yeah, well, these moments. Closeout game. If it's a big moment, she doesn't shy away from it. And I think sometimes the pressure, like we just watched the Cameron Belvin, uh, Kaylee Hunter match. As that got tight, those bags started going all over the place. Mm -hmm. And she just has an ability to kind of focus through it. Of course, watch me say that, and she throws it off the back. All right, that, <laughs> so that was on you if it happened. Last round, can Kimberly get two? Got a little bit of drama. More than likely that bag is going to fall. That's a great shot. Better than going in for Kimberly. Yeah. Uh-oh. I like oh. a step out here. She, she stayed, stayed in. in. 
<laughs> Slick Jinx. side. Stops Very perfectly. That, that's why I wanted to step out there. I wanted to be sitting next to it. Coming in hot. Wow. Wow, what a shot. Saves the game, wins the game. She, what a battle. That's what I mean. She just has the ability to hit shots like that when she absolutely has to, and it separates her. At least at this point in the female game, it separates her from the other ladies. I'm not sure if a step out from Kimberly would have bullied that bag out, but regardless, Cheyenne just able to push through it. Takes everything in. Score remains 6-5. She advances to take on Christine Papke to get to the broadcast. Uh, Bernie, you going to take off or you sticking around, man? I don't know. Is anyone ready to come in? I don't I don't know. I guess I'm here for a while. I don't know. We just got a lot of pretty pretty talent looking. Yeah. But let's go. Let's do a bracket breakdown let's since do it. we didn't get to do one. All right, Frank Milan, the number one seed, will now take on Jordan Camba. As Jordan wow. Camba defeats James Baldwin there, 22-3. Wow. Trevor Kufus. Big He'll be Trevor. drafting on Sunday. He's going to get the winner of that one. <coughs> Trevor Brooks is going to take on the winner of Corey Morrison or Bracey Blanton. Not sure if you remember Bracey is one of my sponsor players from last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Making yeah, yeah. his pro debut. Look, they're coming right back, by the way, with uh, Cam and Rosie coming right at us. Hey, no rest for the no weary. No rest for the weary. Uh, Mark Burgess, 16 to 6 over Sean Markov. David Ryan, 10 to huh. 4 over Daniel Walker Jr. Noel Almanza just moved on. Yeah. Ashton Spees finishes off Adrian Johnson, so that looks like that matchup is underway. Over on the other side, Trey Baker and Alex Lippard. Trey is the number six seed. Jordan Kimbrell, the 11. Tom Ty, Chris Seaton, Jamie Graham, the three seed. So healthy Jamie. Healthy Jamie Graham. That's what we're hearing. Matt Abernethy and Travis Graven. Dave Sutton will take on, or no, he's taking on 19-3 already. My bad. Yikes, he's Tyler Cobb having a bit. How about Brandon Brown? Brandon Brown. Noah Wooten just sat down behind us, not not too pleased with how he played in that match. Well, he said he lost 28 nothing. It wasn't that bad. Probably felt like 38 though. 7.499 for Brandon. Logan Chamberlain comes in as a two seed. This should be a good match with Tyce Cobb. Look at Joe Tyler Saladina. Look at uh, Kobe Costanza. Wow, Kobe Costanza putting it on Neistat. 11 nothing right there. Oh, i got to make my pick. All right, bracket A pick. Uh, and this is hard because uh, it's round limited. This isn't, my, this isn't my normal cup of tea. I know. It's different. i got to pretend I'm a professional. This was you guys last year. I'll go with Noel Monza. How about that? I like Noel Monza. Let's see who's up top. I mean, it's going to be Trevor Frank, Brooks it's gonna is going to be Frank <laughs> Well, the winner of that match with Camba Modlin, and then watch out for Trevor Brooks. Yeah. He seems remarkably focused. Okay, looks like they got the scoreboard updated there. So I am going to go with Noel Monza for bracket A chat. You guys are going to have to keep me uh, on point because I will forget who I take. I mean, that's a big win for Joe Tyler Saladino over. Uh, Where'd it go? Over Tanner Halbert. Tanner Halbert. Oh, my bad. I no, no, I just my brain just lapsed. I, I knew what I was going to say. Matt Guy and Chris Kingsbury repeat so from winter. At Adam Hisner, Matt Guy match any good for that early in a bracket? You've got to get there first. Chris Kingsbury already yeah. has one on Matt Guy, so we'll see. Jimmy Humans will take on Ryan Hart. I'll tell you what, don't sleep on Ryan Hart in Kentucky. Throwing very well. I might sleep on everybody today because I'm. I, I feel it. I feel like I'm about to just Kyle Malone drop Gavin away. Tano, Jay Dotson, Ben Brown. Tyler Puythris. Mm -hmm. These these bags are live, by the way. Oh, I was not aware because we're not even on the screen. All right, let me get you guys some coverage of actual action. Get caught up in these brackets, man. Well, I didn't know. There, there was no updated uh, score. They were still waiting on the scoreboard to get a sign. But I guess they're going to count those down and backs and be Is ready that a to four, go. four spot for Rosie right out of the gate? Tis. Tis indeed. Of course, Cameron went through this in her previous match on this court with Kaylee Hunter falling behind early and then finding a way back. I don't know if Rosie's going to give her the same amount of opportunities Kaylee gave her, though. Yeah, how about Rosie this year? Yeah, she's starting off on fire. She's pretty, playing calm, you know, just playing yeah. pretty much within her elements. She doesn't really have to try and do anything crazy, just very consistent. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, B bracket pick, by the way, I'm going with Matt Guy. So no Almanza and Matt Guy, my first two picks. We'll go through C and D. Matt is very interesting in shootouts. He's He does not do well in singles, but he finds his way through brackets and then struggles late. Yeah. I tried talking to him earlier about uh, Block, and I said, yeah, I did a little highlight reel for you on your – on the uh, bagging and bragging show, and so I, I said one thing. I said I want to see you block this year. He said, "Nope, nope, not gonna do it. Nope, not changing." <laughs> I said, "Okay." <laughs> Chad right. Mayberry finishes off Derek King, fifteen to eight. He'll take on Travis Purser this year or next. Travis Purser, a player to watch this year. Yep. Not a terribly long drive for Travis. Maybe three and a half hours, four hours. And Carson Getty was the one seed for pretty much most of rounders. He falls, though, to Andrew Guy, 23-6. to six. Good bag from Rosie. See if Cameron can collect here, and she does. It's a great bag for the wash, but I always like to say when you're having to hit shots like that just to wash out, it's trouble. You're hitting big. Look, look at the yawn. That was a grade A yawn, Wow. Yeah, get it all out. That was good. All right, we've got uh, some pretty good action in bracket C. Fisher Hamilton is going to take on Mark Richards on court 82. Bottom half of that bracket, Caleb Basson up 6 nothing over Berkeley Pear, and then Damon <coughs> Dennis and Chucky Love always find a way to play each other. My pick for bracket C, though, i got to go with Alex Rawls. That's uh, the bracket, though, with Ryan Smith. He's your shootout king. So. He just finds a way in shootouts. A big opening here. Big opening for Cameron. Oh, and she gives it back. But, yeah, he finds a way in shootouts. He knows how to handle the round limit. He was one of the first ones to really clue into it on how to play it. No Wooten coming in with the Gatorade. Cool blue Gatorade is the best Gatorade. I don't care what anyone says. I have moods. Depending on the mood is what color Gatorade to go with. No mood for me, man. Cool blue all the time. I'll drink others if cool blue is not available. But it's cool blue is all day. Arctic Freeze, is that one? Is that the white one? It sounds like one. I think it's the white one. This match seems to what, – what round are we in? I feel like we're five. flying here. I'm five. Bracket D consists of Ryan Windsor, Jordan Power. You know what I've noticed Zach about Shiner. Rosie's throw? You know, she used to take – she's always taken this big step, but it used to be kind of half at the halfway point of the board. It seems like it's closer to the front now. Oh, she shortened it a little bit? A little bit. She used to take this big step, but she would only get halfway down the board. I mean, she's still not all the way down to the front, but watch. She's a lot closer to the front now than she used to be. I think that's the same result no matter what happens there. Rosie was going to give up, too, even if she pushes through that. All tied at four. Glacier. I think that might be it. Glacier freeze. That sounds like a good one. Uh, Eric Davis up 3-2 over Bobby Hunt on court number 94. Josh Glover making his debut up 10-9 over Jeff Reynolds. Ryan Wienfeld, 8-6 over Nico Morales. And then Philip Lopez taking on Eric Zockline. Wow. And your guy, Devin Harbaugh, he comes in as the two seed in bracket D. He's taking on Brian Schramm. And then Derek Singleton gets the winner of that one. I don't, you know, Devin is also a player that struggled a little bit in the shootout series. Yeah. It's not for everyone. Sorry about the camera, guys. Yeah, it's not for not. I mean, some players have just not adjusted. I mean, Matt Guy being perfect example as a player that has just not adjusted well to the format. I think in bracket D, I'm going to go with uh, Ryan Windsor. Ooh, Devin Hart, man. Bracket D's tough. Yeah, it is tough. I'm gonna stay there. I'm gonna stay there. I'm gonna go with Ryan Windsor in bracket D. So I got, what I got, Matt Guy, Ryan Windsor, Noah Monza. And who was my bracket scene? Said Alex Rawls, one of those brackets. Yeah, Alex okay. Rawls. Rosie sticks her head back out front, 6-4. And I'm going to go with Matt Guy winning the whole thing. Huh. 
I'm doing it, folks. So it's he's never won a shootout. He's and, and, you're, and you're saying he's winning the first he's one this the season? first one. Wow. Interesting call. I like it. That's a, believe it or not, even talking, saying Matt Guy, I mean, that's a hot take in the shootout format. I like it. Matt Guy, Alex Rawls, Ryan Windsor, Noel Monza. I might, I might not get a single one of those right. <laughs> I mean, it's tough. <laughs> it's the, different. The shootouts are stacked, man. Yeah, it's different. And single elimination, too. First it time out. Warm. Yeah, once you get to bracket play and it's round limited, you have two bad rounds for whatever reason at this level, you could be done. So Rosie already has one in here, showing five on three on the board. Round number seven, up two points. Are you shooting this? <laughs> the funny thing is, as she was walking back, you could see her actually doing the math in her head as she was walking back. That was funny. Are you shooting this if you're her? I don't know. I think I'm going in behind. But that's she why is. I'm sitting here. I was shooting it. She's shooting it. She hits it. Even brings her back on the Cameron's back. Cameron's now going to go take a look. That was a big shot right there. That was massive. She knew it. Good job. Grabs all three bags. Brings it to a little bit closer. Makes the one in hand. Whoa. Anthony stuck up. Oh, but a big shot for Cameron. Still gives up two, but that's a big shot. A little unlucky. A two for one? Yeah. Make it 8-4, streaker. It's a big shot, though. Just a little unlucky. Watch this. Uh, I'll take that trade all day, though. Yeah. But down four. Started the match down four, so we'll see. What round are we in? Eight? Round number eight, yes, sir. Landon Crabtree, Chris Fagan, Cole Brewer all remain 5-0. and oh. I'll tell you what, man. For not knowing anything about college, I did pretty good. I'm patting myself on the back on that one. You, you have a tendency to do that, I've noticed. You, Pat myself on the back? Yeah. You're good. Yeah. You, you have a very limber arm. Well, the thing is, Bernie, it's pretty much all about me anyway. <laughs> Everyone else is just here for the show. I hear you. Chat says Jamie Graham's down 7 nothing. Wow. Way too early for me to figure out what these brackets are, but I knew it. As soon as I picked Matt Guy to win the entire thing, Chris Kingsbury up 9 nothing. Look at that. Four rounds remain. Four-point difference. Do you think Rosie holds on? Yes. One million percent. Wow. Wow. I'm going to go ahead and apologize for you if that jinx <laughs> holds on. I have to end the live feed if uh, Matt Guy loses that match. Yeah, well, Re Redo the picks. Oh, go ahead and uh, erase it from history. Yeah, you re get ready for that. Yeah, Rosie's dialed in. She's going to... Cameron's going to need some big shots. He's about to give up two more. Another four-bagger for Rosie. This end to limit the damage, and it is. Make it 10-4. That's a good buddy. I see what you did there. <laughs> Ten four, good buddy. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Tell Trey to talk quieter in the background. What's going on, Trey? Yeah. I don't know. I can't hear. Three rounds left. But we've already known Trey does not care what his volume levels are. If he's going to talk on the <laughs> sideline and people on the match want to listen to him, that's yeah. on them. Same thing with you guys in the chat. I don't blame you guys, though. Listening to me for hours on end is going to be kind of boring. It's tough. We're going to mix and match uh, some other commentators throughout yeah, the weekend. You're about so to it's going to be you're, fun. You're probably about to get one more here in a little bit. Oh, we're going to switch out? Uh, I don't know. I mean, it, it's it's rare to see Jeff this early. So. Uh, got the drip. I don't think you get to switch out. I, I mean, I might. I might just direct and let Anthony and Jeff do the You could do, do that. Anthony and Jeff are right here. Yeah. Well, they both said they're ready. Let them talk a little bit. It could, it could be their time. They could be up next. Hey, maybe Trey can... Uh, produce and yeah. you and I can get some food. I like the way this is working already. 
You shoot outside and have bed. <laughs> Round 11. Cameron has got to pull a rabbit wow. out of the hat. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. she in trouble. Going to need some help. Rosie's just not missing. You're going to have to do something to get her off her game. I think she wanted that to be a block and it just kept going. Austin, we'll switch over to the guys here in a little bit. We're going to the uh, getting down to the final finals. two in the women's. So this this one here will make uh, the broadcast, and then we got the next match with Christine Papke and Cheyenne, and then after that, that's it for the women's. Got a lot of bracket play in the men's, so a lot of time. Yikesies, give her three more, make it 13-4 going to the final round. <coughs> all you need is a nine. Yeah, no big deal. It's all you need. That's the big one. That'll do it. Yeah, that'll do it. Especially if that's in, for sure. We are done. Rosie Streaker continue. Miranda Coy had her down 10 nothing, and had that match done. Rosie finds a way to get through that and now cruises on through this match. Impressive. A couple good aerials there for Cameron, but a little bit too late. Rosie Streaker advances to the broadcast. Bernie, regardless of what happens on the other side of this commercial, man, it's been a pleasure starting off with you. Yes, sir, as always. All right, chat, see you guys in just a little bit. And we welcome you back to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, inside the Myrtle Beach Sports Center Complex. Great job, as always, by Wally and Bernie. And now the B team walks the B -team in. B team walking in. Alongside the man, Anthony Ione. You know, I, I normally say, like, former pro, but aren't you, you're still a pro, aren't you? Like, nah, aren't you playing I, I can't hang with these guys, man. They're out of okay. my league. All right, so out of my league, Jeff. pro, Anthony <laughs> Ione. I'm Jeff McCarragher, and we are getting right after it here. I mean, what a terrific day. We've had some upsets already. This is the pro shootout women's singles, and this is my first chance to see Cheyenne Bubenheim. Bubenheim, yeah, officially no Bubenheim now. We're going to. So congratulations on the wedding. So no longer Cheyenne Renner, Cheyenne Bubenheim there on the right, Christine Papke on the left, and Anthony, what a day for Christine Papke. I mean, she has been just rolling through the competition today. 
Yeah, that's what I've been hearing. I'm, I'm hot off the plane. I just walked in, uh, red-eyed right in here, Jeff. So, yeah, I heard Papke's making a move. Um, Deborah Odom putting up, uh, I guess, best stats out of all the ladies. Takes a loss in the first round. She's out. Um, lost to Cameron Belvin again, and she told me it's like three straight times now she's lost to Cameron. So she was rooting yes. for Cameron to win so she wouldn't have to see her again the rest of the year in the shootouts. But but then Cameron gets beat by Rosie Streaker, and Rosie's just been solid all day. I mean, she's just firing it right down the middle. Yeah, Deborah was showing me some of her stats. That that loss she took, she she threw over a 10. Cameron threw like a 10.9. So, wow. you know, we see that typically with the ladies, right? We don't get a lot of mess in front of the hole. Uh, a lot of, most of the ladies pull just want to run bags. Right. So it really does come down to PPRs when you're talking about the lady baggers. Right. Now we're going to get that mix up a little bit with the, with, with the men, and I think we're going to move on to some men's singles after this, you know, where we get a little bit more of a defensive approach. But, yeah, the ladies, um, you know, typically just run bags, fill up the hole. So if you're just tuning in, Rosie Streaker is in. So she's into the finals. She will be on TV for the first pro shootout final, which will be in Glendale, Arizona, that week of the Super Bowl. So congratulations to Rosie, and she'll play the winner, obviously, of this matchup right here as Papke. Boy, this is this is shocking, Anthony. I mean, two, and she's kind of all over the boards right now. Yeah, I mean, what a good run for Papke. I mean, if yeah. we rewind, you know, let's go back three years. You know, Papke was a, a constant face on, on, on the broadcast. She was, you know, a legend and still a legend to this day. You know, she helped grow this sport, but she's been a bit quiet the last couple of years. We've seen the women talent just blow up. And then so it's really good to see a Papke saying, hey, I'm still in the mix here. Hey, I'm still I yeah. can still can compete with this new this new talent pool in the, in the ladies division. Cheyenne with a six to nothing lead. Cheyenne hit a terrific shot against Tiffany Sparks about 10 minutes ago uh, to keep her journey alive. Tiffany was playing really well. I mean, she was just like Rosie. She was just right down the middle. And Cheyenne found herself basically in a scenario where she had two bags on the side. Rosie was kind of blocking her. Or not Rosie. Um, uh, Tiffany was blocking her, and she just was able to push everything, collect it all in. It was a terrific shot to stay alive. And this is now going to be a 10 to nothing lead. Yeah, yeah running, running, away. Am. Bubenheim running away with this one. Rather, uh, that's got. My, it's going to take a minute to get used to. I, I've been talking shy. We've been talking shy and Renner for years, so yeah, I'm with it's going to take a little bit of a minute. But you know what's weird for me right now is seeing Papke throw a bag that isn't. A Reynolds bag. I feel like forever she has been throwing the, uh, you know, the Reynolds brand. Uh, so coming out with something new. I actually don't know what that is. I see all cornhole on her jersey. I'm going to assume that's a an all a, all cornhole bag. Um, so yeah, much different. Uh, and I always thought she would have been a much more improved player uh, getting away from carpet. So here, here's a case where she now is off carpet and uh, finding herself one game away from TV. And now another big round here for Cheyenne. And, wow, this one has just gotten away from Christine Papke. It is 14 to nothing in favor of Cheyenne. Well, you know, the only bad thing about this, Anthony, is how badly would you love to see Cheyenne and Rosie right now? Yes. You know, <laughs> I mean, both of them playing so well. And Rosie, I'm telling you, Rosie was just firing it right down the middle. I'd love to see the two of them play right now. Can we just do it just for fun and then do it again out in Glendale? Boo. Boo. I'll Trey, take that. Trey Ryder with the boo. I'll take that as a no from Trey. Hey, listen, I, Rosie Streaker uh, throwing out of her mind right now. Yeah, that's um, what I'm saying. In a conference, what was that, a couple weeks ago in a conference, putting up numbers that I have not yet seen definitely in the ladies' division, maybe, maybe pro-wise. I mean, we're talking about almost an 11 across an entire tournament. You know, if we go back three years ago, you know, it was like, oh, you know, a nine, mid nines, you know, you're winning tournaments. And then I remember my second year, I think it was, yeah, my second year as a pro, uh, someone threw a 10. I want to say it was, ah, I can't remember who it was, but someone threw a 10 and won the tournament and all the pros were talking, hey guys, it's going to take 10s to win tournaments. Yeah. Now we're seeing 11s. Like, are, are you serious? Yeah. Is it going to is it going to get to the point where it's going to take an 11 to did, win a tournament? Did she run it over 11? Who's this? Rosie? I want to say she was like a 10-9 over the entire tournament. Now, she had multiple games over, over 11. 11. Yeah. Amazing. Well, this one not done yet, maybe. Christine able to put up that four spot, round six. So. 
going to be tough here, though. I think that's best yeah. case scenario. I mean, if she goes, two purples might go with her. Um, yeah, I think that worked out. I just can't see if that one dripped on the back. She's taking a peek. Yeah, that's going to move it now to 18 to 4. So just when it looked like maybe Christine had a chance, Cheyenne says no. Now it helps her out there. You can see the frustration now building on the face of Christine Papke. Boy, the, the shootout series are so final, right? It's just so tough. Single elimination after the rounders. I mean, you lose and you're done. Like, how about earlier today? I'm not sure if you – I know you just flew in. Samantha Finley, right off the bat today. Boom. What, what happens? A loss to, to a rookie. I can't remember the rookie that Sam lost to. Elizabeth Tennyson. Oh, okay. I've, I've, I've seen the name. Haven't seen the player. 21-2. to two. Wow. Just like okay. that. And I'm telling you, just like that, Sam's day was done. Wow. Just, 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 it's so final here in this pro shootout series. Yeah, single single limb is tough, man. I, I mean, even at home when you're playing in your locals, you know, it's like you you have three or four bad rounds and your tournament's done. Yeah, yeah sing, single elimination is tough. And then you throw the round limited on top of that. Odom, again, a good example. She came out of rounders by far the highest in stats. First round loss, boom, she's out. Yep. Well, Cheyenne's got a chance to put this one away here in just round eight. Yeah, when you're when you're hitting 21 in these 12 round limits, you you know that that person's throwing fire, and there it is, so Cheyenne Bubenheim. That will do it. And again, congratulations to Rosie Streaker and Cheyenne Bubenheim. They are in the women's singles final in the first pro shootout, and they'll head to Glendale, Arizona, Super Bowl weekend to see who's going to get that first automatic bid. We see the final as Cheyenne puts it away, 21-4. to four. And, again, the only bad news, I'm telling you, I would love to see Rosie and Cheyenne right now. Yes, no doubt. The championship. <laughs> they are both so locked in. All right, are we going to take a break? All right, we'll take a break. And I think we're going to switch over to the men's side now right away. So Let's we'll take go. a quick time out back with men's singles here in Pro Shootout Qualifying. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, right after this.
All right, time to switch over to the men's singles pro shootout qualifying here from inside the Sports Center Complex here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, alongside Anthony Ione. I'm Jeff McCarriger. Thanks for joining us here this afternoon here from the East Coast. And uh, glad, Anthony, that you're able to have safe travels and make your way in, especially with air travel being a nightmare over the last four or five days. So hopefully you made it no issues. Yeah, no doubt. Actually, driving, I was driving to the airport pretty late. I, I had like a 2 a.m. flight last night, and Denver was dumping snow. It was like maybe close to a foot. <laughs> so I was 30. I was like white knuckles, 30 miles an hour all the way to the airport last night. Um, took me about twice as long to, just to get there. I was like, oh, yeah, it's time to get out of Denver. This is a good time. Well, again, congratulations to Cheyenne Bubenheim and Rosie Streaker. They will be traveling to Glendale, Arizona, Super Bowl weekend. They are the finalists for the, that first automatic bid in the pro singles shootout for the women. And now on to the men. Gabe Dolan here against Bobby Hunt. And Anthony, a couple of rookies. I mean, you know, last year was the year of the rookie. I cannot wait to see what happens this year and see if we just get another huge rookie class. Man, I'm excited for this match. This is where the start of the season really gets fun. We're going to start seeing these rookies. You know, what do we get out of these rookies? But yeah. two rookies that have been talking a lot, quite a bit about um, this season, you know, whether it be on uh, around the ACL or whatever, Twitter and whatnot, some of some social medias. But we got Gabe Dolan. I believe he's out of Ohio. Um I got to see him at Worlds. That's kind of the first time I got to see him at Worlds. I was spending a little time in the HQ, throwing bags late at night, and this is one of the guys who always seemed to be there first thing in the morning, and then one of the last guys turned the lights off. Gabe Dolan right here, the dude was just working, and I was really impressed with just how much he, the passion he had for it, and he wanted to put as much, much time into the game as possible. Um, actually a bit surprised he doesn't have a carpet bag in his hand. He was pretty committed to that coming off of uh, the World's event where he ended up qualifying to be a pro. And he's got a new bag, and these are these Noble bags. I don't know much about them, but I believe, just talking to him right before, it sounded like it was a Surefire-like material. Um, so interesting to see what he's able to do with these things because he's your typical cut and roll kind of guy. The first time I really heard any significant talk um, about these bags was at Spencer McKenzie's. Okay. Um, so I'm with you. Yeah, I mean, relatively new as far as my knowledge of this bag goes as well. So again, a four spot right away by Gabe and an early lead here. And then I think it was, I think it was here last year. That's the first time I saw Bobby Hunt. I want to say it was in this building this same time last year. We got a peek at Bobby Hunt, and I was impressed with what he was doing. Very unique style. If you look at it, if you look at him, Jeff, he he grabs the top corner of that bag, which isn't common. We see someone like a Jimmy Humans do it, but he actually lets go of the bag with all of his fingers and then regrips in the air. Watch this. You just see see the fingers let go, yes. and then he regrips. So uh, we see that sometimes that regrip in the back of the swing, and it's definitely something you want to try and shed over time. But man, that muscle memory kicks in. And it's almost it's almost impossible to get rid of. Well, that's super interesting. It reminds me of a story I'll tell you about here in just a minute after this last shot. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it just lifts the fingers lifts off. It, almost lets go. Grips it and just kind of flicks it. It's like, um, you know, when you get when you get a grip, right? You get the resin in the right spot. Nothing's really moving around. In his case, whatever he grabs, he grabs. We see Isabella Soprenit do it where she kind of she flips it from one hand to the other and just grabs whatever she yeah. grabs and then throws it. Now, obviously, they're both pretty successful with it, but I just find it interesting. I ran into Noah Wooten earlier today, and I forgot to ask him because late during the pro season last year, he told me he had gotten Anthony down to where he was only gripping the bag with basically his yes. thumb and one finger, maybe yes. maybe two. And I was going to ask him if he worked on that. He said he couldn't fight it. Yes. I mean, once you learn that, it becomes a habit, and he just couldn't, he just couldn't uh, kick it. Yeah, his last two fingers, pinky and ring finger, are basically off the bag. Yeah. And 4 nothing here, Gabe on top as we are in round number three. By the way, just got this from Trey here. Ryan Wiedenfeld now has lost Josh Glover. Lost to Josh Glover? Yes. Stop Glover won it. Glover won it 16-12. to 12, So Wow. Obviously went to the final 12th round. But, yeah, Josh advances. As a matter of fact, the winner here will play Josh next. So... Bobby Hunt going to be giving up some more points here. So with the round limited format, we talk a lot about, you know, it's just a different game, right? It's a different 
thought wise, strategy wise. So right now, you know, typically Bobby Hunt would go, ah, six zip. I got a lot of game left, right? But, you know, and then you look at the board and you're like, okay, I'm, I need to make up some points here and there. You know, I can't just wash this thing all the way to round 12 and then right. I find myself losing by six. So let's see if he kind of changes the strategy because so far it's been pretty much running bags to the hole. Let's see if he tries to put a little something in the way. Yeah, and also just the mental strategy. I had a really good conversation with uh, Samantha Finley last night. She said that something she learned from watching the tape back from last year is that when you're down in round limited, you, you still can't panic. Can't panic. She noticed in the championship game that she probably should have blocked Cheyenne late. Even though she was down a couple of points, she should have laid a block and forced Cheyenne to be the aggressor. Right, right. And, and she and she just panicked, tried to try to make too much happen, and then ended up being a disaster and it turned the match and she ended up losing. Yeah, and, and I, I kind of, I'm a believer of hey, you don't lay the block until you have to. You know, don't get yourself out of your normal game. Someone like a right. Rosie Streaker, run bags. Now, when you need to be able to lay a block, you have to have that in your back pocket. She should sure. be practicing laying a block, but don't completely change your strategy like that. Sure. What's up, boy? Light skin in the house. Oh, bounces off the back of the board. Just kind of looking the bracket a little bit here, Jeff. Um, Bobby Hunt coming off a big win. He beat Eric Davis 23-3 to to get to this match. So if he got the Eric Davis that we normally see, he had to be playing pretty well to, uh, to pull out a win with that much of a margin. Finding himself down 6-0 or 7-0 here yeah. to Gabe Dolan. Round five. So I kind of look at these round limitings in two-point increments. I look at it as making up points, two points per round, you know. Um, so down seven, I'm thinking, hey, you're going to need four rounds to work yourself back into this. 12-10, 12-10, 10-8, those are your common denominators getting two out. I mean, pulling a four or a six out is rare. So right now we are in, what are we in, round five. Bobby's going to need four rounds, if you will, to get back into this if he's squeezing out two. So he has time. It's not time to panic. Ah, see, that's where a back block is so powerful, Jeff. A back block is going to guarantee him a, blocking up a push here. Gabe Dolan inside arm, Jeff, so he can come up the middle of the board a little bit better here to get that push, and he's left. Oh. He's left. That's bag four for him. Still, though, he's got two right there, right? I don't think you do anything crazy here for Bobby Hunt. There's a bag sitting front, level one. I mean, just put it on, take your two. How slick are those bags, Anthony? Oh, it's going. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it's holding. Those are going to drop. Wow. They're not going to go. Bobby Hunt uh, double-timing it to the other side. He kind of picked up his pace on that walk to get that back. All right, so he's going to get a couple of points to make it 7-2 to two as we move on to round number six. All right, so this one's just for you. This one just in. Chris Kingsbury. Hang on, don't look. Don't peek. Oh, I'm not peeking. I got a surprise. You. Chris Kingsbury just beat Matt Guy 17-1. to one. What? Kingsbury, 46, 46 out of 40. No, 47 out of 48 bags. Oh, my God. All right, so he hit 46 in, one on, only one off. His PPR, 11.58. I would look hey, at some of these stats. A DPR of minus 1.3 for Matt Guy. That's insane. That, that. So that that is odd. Um, if if without showing me stats, yeah, I know. if you told me Chris, Chris Kingbury's won by that much, I would be thinking he was putting down a perfect level one block and, and Matt Guy's airmail was off. But if he's putting every bag in the hole, yes. he just outran Matt Guy to the hole. That's insane. So, again... You know, something that we talked about, well, now for two years in a row, right? And I know you guys were talking about on the podcast is just some of the top names, top five names in the sport that just can't win it on the single side. No doubt. Big decision here for Gabe Dolan. He's got a bag front. Another airmail off the back. He's given up big points, but if he can hit this, he squeezes one. He's going up. Bang, he hits it clean. No drag. Gets him back into it. Still going to give up a point, a drag to get a point. Bobby Hunt working himself back into this match. Training just to show me how to do the replay. I want to see that again. That was just bangs it off the back. Seven to three. Round number seven. So still plenty of time in this one here. Still mind boggling that Kingsbury just beat Matt Guy to the hole. Running bags. That's that's Look, amazing. See the bags in? 46 bags in. Unbelievable. He missed two yeah. out of 48. And, and really, really only missed one, right? I mean, the one that went went, went off. Jeez, unreal. 
good bag position for Dolan. That, that, that's how Mark Richards win games. He sits front of the hole like that. Bobby Hunt just going to clean up. Almost 85% four-bagger percentage for Kingsbury. In that. <laughs> it's just insane. Plenty of time for Bobby Hunt to get back in this match. Gives up two points there. Dolan counting two off a of four-bagger. Round limited matches, you do not go try and drag that bag. Just get in for your 10. Make Dolan hit it to get two points. And oh, misses. and there it Off is. to the right. A little bit of a celebration there for Bobby Hunt. Those are two points he's not going to have to go get later. Down four. All right, and, and this is exactly what we were just talking about. And you, and you said it perfectly, Anthony. Don't panic. And that's what Samantha was saying. Even though you're down and it's round limited, you, you just can't panic. Yep. If you try to force something to happen, then you put yourself in a big hole and, and you can find yourself in a ton of trouble or out of it. So Bobby playing super smart right here, staying just down four points, round number eight. Boy, and, and really watching Bobby closely here for the first time. A huge opportunity now for Bobby on the second bag. Anthony, we, we talked about the grip, but also the way that he swings his arm out. Yeah, he's got a little hitch, right? He kind of yeah. has this uh, hitch over the, over the right hip. And, you know, when you're over the board, not a huge deal. I wonder how that affects him when you're, when that, you know, that's your outside arm. Because now you're even further away from the board, right? Right, right. Oh, man. I was going to say, I don't hate that bag from Dolan. He wanted to be a little bit deeper on that level one, but I didn't hate it. And it paid off. Bobby Hunt went to try and get the full collect. He still had a bag in his hand. He didn't have to get so aggressive. Big, get big cleanup right there for Dolan. He's counting three points on a miss here. Boy, Bobby's first one was in. Gabe then missed a chance for Bobby to get a couple of points. And now the round is flipped. Doesn't get the miss, but he can get out of here with a point. Oh, he oh. comes up short, gives up a point, Jeff. So make it seven to four as we move into round number nine. Jeff, fourth bag, last bag in the round. You got a bumper on the right side. It's almost like leaving that birdie putt short. Like anything but short, right? I mean, attack the hole. Don't leave the birdie putt short. And he did right there, giving up, giving up points. Was this was it seven to nothing? 7-0, so we yeah. got a 4-0 run, and, and, and just chipping, right? Bobby not right. getting crazy. He's just chipping away out of it. What do we have? Four rounds four rounds of play left? Again, just looking at the bracket real quick. We talked about Bobby Hunt. He got a bye in the first round, gets Eric Davis in the second round, 23-3. That got him to this game here. See, this is what I'm worried about in this end. And I don't know, Anthony, because I'm only watching him for the first time. I'm wondering how that little hitch affects him on the outside arm. You know, I'd love to see his stats outside versus inside arm. And I don't know. I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe he's, maybe he's, he's fine with both. Yeah, I wouldn't imagine it being too much of a difference. Um, every player has their little, their signature, little stamp on their swing. Like if, if you took away, if you just saw a silhouette, we'd probably be able to pick everyone's swing out because they just have that uniqueness to it. I just feel like you're just increasing that angle, right? Dolan and missed deep, it in this situation last time. If you remember, he gets it this time. The last time he uh, he missed the ten, he missed for a 10-10 wash. Not going to admit it, miss it this time. Nine to four. Still plenty of time here. Round number ten. Yeah, real quick, I was talking about brackets. So then Gabe Dolan also had a buy in the first round. He pulls an Anthony Maybell in the second round. That gets them here. So these boys are both in their third in the third round of the bracket. The winner of this gets Josh Glover. And we were just talking about him taking down Ryan Weedenfield. So Glover waiting for the winner of this one. Perfect bag. I love that. That's a side-by-side. -side. I, I would like it just a little bit closer to the hole so you're more in the lead position. But beautiful side-by-side -side catches the front of the board. 
Bobby Hunt in the same exact situation on this side, tried to collect it all. He has two more bags left, Jeff. He doesn't need to get everything at once. I think you just throw your normal slide shot, and if you can collect a little bit of this, you take it as a bonus. Oh, oh he hits the front blocker. Oh, my gosh. So not only did that kick his bag out, what it did is just opened up Gabe Dolan's lane. So he was kind of jacked up his lane. Now he has a clean line to the hole here. He's either going to block up there in the middle or just push through it all. Perfect lay. So can Bobby still go after that back, though? I like Bobby either pushing through all of it, get two reds on the one green, or airmail over the top. He's coming in hot. Yep. There it is. Oh, he kind of... Did anything fall? No, no, I don't think so. I think they're both still stuck right there. So now what do you do? I don't think you throw this. Oh, no, I'm sorry. He's Bobby Hunt still has a bag left. Okay, I didn't see that bag four in his hand. You just got to push through everything. A chance to get two for Bobby Hunt down five, running out of rounds. He's going to need these two points here. Well, Gabe's got the one off, too. That's right, Jeff, a five. Oh, and my gosh. It in. It's going to end up being a big round. High game? Bobby. Is that a, a five, yeah, five-point round. That's a high game. I missed the bat. I forgot we knocked that front blocker off the board. Yeah, when, he, when, he, when he checked up yes. off that yeah, the front blocker, he knocked it off. Oh, my gosh. Wow, tied at nine. Two rounds left. You know when Dolan was up 7-0, he's saying his head, just don't give up a big round. Yep. And there it is. What was that in round nine? It was 10. Round 10. Round 10 yep. gives up a five. We got a tie bag game. Oh, oh no. Off. He sold. Bag one right off the side. Big opportunity here for Gabe. Critical bag right in front. Oh, that's a painful bag, Jeff. He only had eight bags left. Chucks the first one off the side. That's three points sitting on the carpet. And then shanks oh the second gosh. one. The perfect block in front does its job. So one off, one out of play. A little off to the right. Maybe a little something here. Jimmy Eumann's in the house, Jeff. Jimmy Eumann's in the house himself. Oh, man, those are three tough bags. He, wow. he pulls out a five, gives five to seven points right back. Oh, this could end up, yeah, geez, Gabe puts it in, and this is going to end up being big. That was a perfect bag. When you're inside arm like that on a level three, you want to attack that blocker, and he kind of pushed it in Bobby Hunt's lane, a oh. disastrous round 11 for Bobby Hunt. He's this showing guy, this a one. A nine point round, right? He puts this in. Yeah, he puts Ouch. it in. That's a 10-1, right? Good night. I, oh I, gosh, I, bet we, yeah. I bet we asked Bobby the last time he gave up a 9. I bet it hasn't been this year. <laughs> yeah, probably right. 18-9, to nine, and now the score. Wow, just tied a second ago. Final round. I mean that's pretty much it. He four four bags on the board wins it. And again, I don't mean I don't mean to beat a dead horse, but again, it was outside arm. Hey, yeah, so, hey, so I don't you, know. I don't know if it was outside or not. arm. He caught the side edge. He caught the front lip, and then and then just blew one off the back. With a little hitch, he's right down the middle. But when it's outside arm, you're just decreasing the landing space. But I mean, I don't know. Maybe it has nothing to do with it. All right, Gabe Dolan is going to put this one away in advance. Wow, he got a scare. He was up 7 to nothing. Bobby Hunt comes all the way back to tie it at nines, and then he puts it away. So congratulations to Gabe Dolan as he stays alive, and he will play Josh Glover next, again, who we were just talking about. So we will take a break and back with more from Myrtle Beach. There's Jordan Power. Might have him next, it looks like. Back with more right after this. Let's go.
Alongside Anthony Ione, I'm Jeff McCarriger. Thanks for joining us here from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, as we move on on the men's side. Pro singles shootout qualifying. Again, we will take it all the way down to the women's final, which we've got already. Men's final, doubles final. All eight players will travel on to Glendale, Arizona, the week of Super Bowl weekend to compete for the first automatic bids to be handed out in 2023 on the pro shootout side. Again, congratulations, Gabe Dolan, with that big win over Bobby Hunt. Puts him away late, and now we move on. Jordan Power on the court against Zach Shibner. First chance to see Shibner play. I kind of like the music. I thought we were going to keep it on the whole time. <laughs> I was like, it's going to fade out soon. That'd be kind of cool. Just kind of fade it out. <laughs> All right, looks like these bags are live. Jordan Power with the honors, first bag. Well, actually, no, they're already underway. I was looking down on my iPad and didn't see we're well underway. Big and push attempt for Power right out of the gate. So he was trying to push through all that, Jeff. A little right fires off the back. A cut attempt almost rolls over the right side. Power will take that. So just to kind of give you a scope of what we're, uh, we're looking at here in this um, shootout one. So four brackets, A, B, C, D. We're right in that three to four round, depending on which bracket you're in. So this one's going to be a fourth round matchup out of bracket D. Again, single elimination for this format here. Let's look at Jordan Powers' run real quick. So he gets a bye in the first round, gets Ethan Walker 21 to 17 in the second round, and Felis Vargas 15 to 12. That name kind of pops up for me. Just looking at some of the rookie stats, Jeff, this guy Felix, I mean, he was up there in stats uh basically ppr wise haven't seen him play yet so i'm excited to see what he can bring to the season but uh there's a good example a rookie coming in loses out by three points to jordan power deep back of the hole and power ah. gets it back obviously upset with himself off to the right now big bag here oh that one's not going to go either so it could have been a huge round for Jordan Power. Still will be a plus round, obviously, but it could have been big. Yeah, Zach's line just a little bit off. I mean, he had the hole surrounded with red bags. We go to the previous round, same thing. He just kind of had a cluster in front of the hole. And that's where Jordan Power is going to excel. He's got a really good line to the hole. He's got an insane airmail, and he can push with some of the best of them. What do you think of Jordan with the Titan bags? Yeah, I mean, the Titan brand, man, just blowing up. The Titan squad looking pretty nice this season, Jeff. I mean, there is a stack of players on there. Two players that I've never seen throw any other bag uh, than local, right? We got Cody yeah. and Adam moving over to Titan as well. Jay Rubin. I mean, that. just look at the list on that, that team. It's, it's a pretty stacked squad. Jordan gets pinned, tries to touch it, and now big bag coming up here for Zach. Jordan just missing bags that he normally doesn't miss. Um, you know, a little bit left, a little bit right. His line's just a little bit off, but you can see it on his face. He's not happy. I, I didn't see his lead in games to see if it's something he's been battling all, all day. You know, sometimes that happens. You know, you're just like, why are my bags keep going left? I keep piling up on the left. But in this case, there was two bags to the left of the hole there. Let's keep an eye on that. Well, I was talking with Wally yesterday while everyone was getting everything set up, and he said that so far what he's seen out of Jordan, he just hasn't seen Jordan look really 100% comfortable with those bags yet. It takes a little time. It takes a little time, so I just switched over bags myself. Um, you know, not just getting used to the, you know, a different feel, a different floppiness. The fill is going to give you different movements. Sometimes they hop. Sometimes they push better. The template, maybe it's a little bit smaller. It's a little bigger. So there's all these things. And then, of course, just the attributes of the bag. It's faster than I'm used to. It's slower than I'm used to. So yeah. there's a lot going on to work through a bag way. and get comfortable. Um, you know, think about Jamie Graham. You know, once he was signed with McCann and fired, it, it took a couple seasons to get that bag where he wanted it. Remember, he and Jason really worked during the offseason last year. Well, to, to be fair, they for him. to be fair, they, they came out with that. I think it was called the starter. <laughs> and I'm sure there's a lot of fans out there <laughs> laughing right now. Um, you know, once they got the uh, once they got the bag that they liked in their hand. But, yeah, that first bag coming out of the gate was pretty was pretty yeah. rough. <laughs> I think it was a pillow, man. I got a set of those and I'm like, man, this feels like a pillow. <laughs> 
Does this even fit in the hole? Second bag for Jordan. There he is again, Jeff, off to the left. So we're seeing a little trend of bags left. Step out, inside arm. This will be a tough collect if he can get a piece. Gets a piece but rotates. I think you abandon ship, come back tight to the board, go up the middle for your 10. Oh, nice shot. He's not. He's going to step out here, Jeff. Risky shot. What's What was the score going in? I can't see. It says it's 5-4. Oh, it oh, pays off. Both. He just shuts me up right there, Jeff. It pays off. I said, stay tight to the board. Abandon ship. He said, nah. Nah. I'm going to go get it. That's a tough collect inside arm. It's tougher to move a bag left to right uh, as a right-hander. So it stays 5-4. to four. Jordan on top by one. Zach misses off to the right. Especially with the way Zach throws a bag. Watch how tilted this bag is, Jeff. Yeah. So we're going to see from our position, we're going to see the bottom of this bag only. So he throws a committed tilt bag. Zach's bag is leaning hard to his right hand. So he has to play a bag that goes right to left. That's just what's going to happen. So he's going to move his spot right to account for the left movement. Now, typically oh, for baggers like this, they're going to they're gonna be good rollers. They're going to be good cutters. Oh, and Jordan upset and misses off Which to side the was left it? again. Left yeah. again. I was going to say, just like you were saying. You know, I love that bag by Zach. That is so much fun to watch. And you're right. When we're on this side, here on the near side with him, we're totally seeing the underneath side of that bag. Love it. You know, that, that that's the bag that I've talked to Trey about that's almost like a slider in baseball to where... You've just got to know where your spot is on the board when you're throwing that, right? Yeah. Because you know you're going get, to get get a little bit of that cut right to left. So you right. just got to land it in that same spot every time. Same thing with pitchers. They find a spot. Good touch coming through for power. So that was key. Wanted to touch that. That's going to force a full step out for Zach. That little bit of bully is going to make this a little bit harder to grab. But this is the bag he has, the right to left movement. And there it is. He's okay with that. He plays this type of dirty game. Oh, somehow he finds the hole there. I think better would have been in front, right? Now, Zach, he's got to hit it. All right, so now. But he's got a big collect so opportunity here. this is my here. question. When you've got that angled bag with the tilt, and you know you got to hit a spot on the right side to bring it back in, how difficult is it to collect with that type of bag? Well, here's what he's got to do. He has to flip that bag over. So if he flips it over and he goes slick side, he's going to get a lot less kick. Sure. Okay. And in this situation, he's got a lot, of, he's got a lot of stuff to collect here. Yeah. Okay. It just doesn't have as much friction. Now he has a stick bag in his hand. That's telling me he's not comfortable with his slick side. Oh, no, he just flipped it over. We're going to get a slick side here, Jeff. All right, here you go. Exactly what you were saying. And Good boom. choice. Oh, wow, what a shot. Good choice by Zach. Flipped it over, slick side, less kick, collects everything. Good set. Boy, and you were dead right, Anthony. It's exactly what he did. Bag four in for a 12. And now back, just cutting that one in. Wow, what a, tur I mean, that is big time cornhole right there. I'm telling you, I'm not saying, I'm not joking saying that. That that was a big time round for No Zach. doubt. Man, I love watching that. Yeah, that was a good set. He got kind of hung up on the right side. See, we debate this all the time, right? Slide game versus the quote unquote right. dirty game. If you've got, if you've got where you can flip it over to that, to that slick side yes. and, it, and it acts kind of like a slide shot. Yes. And still collect. That's like the best of both worlds, right? It is. It is. That and was Perfect. You'd be surprised how many pros are not comfortable flipping over to... It's typically the carpet guys who are not comfortable flipping over to a slick side. And I think you have to be, and this is what we talk about. To be at a championship, consistent championship level, you've got to have that. Right. What, what a great shot by Zach. Wow. Oh, I love that. That's a lane side level one inside arm for Zach. That is a perfect block position. Full tilt. He tried, There was a little kind of... And it wasn't even a roll. I call that a lift. So basically, he lifted... The block side of the bag, just try to make it over, but his mark was too far to the right. Power getting fired up, man. His his shot's just a little bit off. You can see the frustration on his face. Good good little roll bag. It was kind of a cut roll. Yeah, he throws such a... So to throw a roll bag, you're more back tilted right. than side tilted. He just throws such a drastic side tilt. It almost like cartwheels to the hole. Wally and I, again, we're just talking about Jordan and the Titan bags. This is my first chance to see him with the Titan bags. And Wally, small sample size for me, but you could be onto something. 
Seven to five. Now Zach has taken the lead. Round number nine. Now Jordan's corrected right down the middle. Wally was also giving me a hard time because we had to submit our top five for the year. Yeah. On the pro side. I may or may not have put Jordan Power in there. <laughs> nice. There's another perfect level one block from Power, oh. and it pays off. All right, so that's the... Oh, he's oh. right. Oh, he is so frustrated. He's laying a nice level one, and it's giving yep. him opportunity to score. Don't shoot that. <laughs> Jordan Power is the kind of guy that wants that <laughs> and one on the back. But we're in round limited format. He's going to stay smart here. And he's going to tack on a couple of more to tie it up at seven as we move on to round number 10. So is that the strategy then against a guy like Zach? You want to you put that level one right on his landing spot? So I don't know his game well enough. He seems to be struggling with it. Um, the type of bag he's throwing, I believe that's a combat. It looks like Tony Smith's, uh, you know, contraband combats. Right. If I walk up to the board against a guy throwing a set of these red combats, I don't want to block him. I feel like... Let him make his own mistakes? I feel like he wants a block game. Okay. Well, that's what Jordan's doing here, just trying to keep it clean. Yeah, I mean, it's paying off. He's having the opportunity to score. Now he's making his own errors, unforced errors, missing mm -hmm. some holes. That's why it's scored. the tie is seven. I mean, if Jordan Power was playing his normal game here, it'd be seven zip. But he's made some mistakes here. And that one ah. checks up off the backside. So that's exactly what you said, Anthony. Just go down the middle and force Zach into unforced errors, and that's exactly what he did. Now we move on to round number 11, two-point lead again here for Jordan, 9-7. to seven. Yeah, I take that back. Those, th that's my fault. They just look so much like Tony Smith's bags, uh, the design. That, that is not a contraband bag. Well, you're right. Siva. It looks identical from here. Yeah. Jordan again off to the left. Even, oh. the, even the design on top looks similar. Zach checks up short. What do we got here? Round 11? Yep. So these guys are down to their last six bags or so. Look at this, Anthony. Jordan, again, just cannot get locked in consistently down the middle. That front bag is going to be key. If he collects that bag off the front 7 o'clock position, and he does, that sets him up to go into the last round with a lead, Jeff. Jordan oh, again my gosh. Left. Zach in position to win this one. Power going to have to do something pretty miraculous in round 10. Or round 12, rather. And he gets it in. Bangs it in. Six-point round lead change. Look where he's piled up, Jeff. Left side of the hole. So for oh, me. What a shot. For me, if I'm going, if I'm going left. Well, let me switch it because I'm a lefty. Yeah, if I'm going left, I'm not getting underneath my, my bag enough. I'm not getting flat palm enough. I'm releasing pinky low. If I release pinky low, I end up on the side of the board like, like Jordan Power does. Jordan's trying to lay that block. First bag was in for Zach. Critical first bag was in. All right, you said don't lay the block. So that plays into his game, and he just puts it right on top of Jordan's bag. He almost has to, <laughs> almost has to bar soap just to get two points. All right, it's... Just leaves the stack there and hits the airmail. I mean, he, he needs he needs four. In for the win, I think, right? Does that math work out? All right, he's going to need to bar his soap, bully. I mean, something crazy. He's going to come through. He's going to save it. Mm, brings them both in. That's a bad game. Yeah, I, there's no way to get four here, right? If he goes off the board, which he does, oh my he could bar a soap to get back into this. So he needs four. He. Th All right, so we you got. See how he just said, you see that red bag? He I'm has to throw it out. to the curtain. Yeah, he's got to get that red bag off the board. So this is a bar of soap scenario. He's going to come through hot, real hot and low. He's going to land right behind the stack. And what it's going to do is it's going to shove the entire pile forward, and the red bag ends up on the backside. He needs one boo bag to fall for a 10 6. Fires it low and missed it off to the right. <laughs> what a performance out of Zach Shibner. 
some critical throws. That was wow. impressive. I loved watching his game. I'd have lost that bet, Jeff. You tell me Zach Shibner was going to come in here and beat Jordan Power at shootout one in round four? Not going to happen. Congrats to him, man. As always, on the shootout side, the upsets continue as we roll on from Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and also rolling on Zach Shibner. We're back with more after this. Okay, it's gone. Like, you're going to get a second another one. That's why I would say. She's going to give me another one if you take this, so can I just keep this one? Yeah, I got you. Cool. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. Sorry, I was waiting for the music. No music. We're just back. Whoa, we're, we're in it. There it hey, is. Hey, now, now we're Wally. officially back. Wally's but, sneaky, man. He'll just put you on the air without you knowing. He's like, here's your damn music. Just, just start talking. Seriously, you don't need to be divas. Just, he's just he's like, just start talking. Just do your job. <laughs> All right. Speaking of doing our job as we move on, Trey Baker against Jamie Graham. So Trey here obviously making a nice run because, as you just said, Anthony here recently, I mean, we're on to what, about the fourth or fifth round now for these players? Yeah, I'm trying to pull up that bracket now. We should be right around that round five. Well, it'll be interesting to... It See takes how. six rounds to take a king seat. So we're basically right right before that king seat, if that's in fact where we're at. Let me let me see if I can find this one. Well, I'm still so impressed with Zach Shibner, who we just saw everyone was talking about it during the break. Big okay. win over over Jordan Power. Yeah, that's just, a big just win. Could not, he just, Jordan, and Wally and I were talking about it. Jordan just looked like he was just having to work so hard. You know, the bag just it just... He was just fighting the bags. And I'm sure you felt like that before, too. It was just one of those rounds. He was just fighting it. Yeah, I mean, Zach was giving him a chance to win that match. Yeah. Uh, it, what, there was nothing amazing happening there. He just couldn't hit an open hole. He right. just left a lot. He left a lot of two points, a lot of two points on the board with ones instead of hole shots. Okay, yeah, so we are round four on this one. We're moving over to bracket A. Let's look at the run here real quick for Jamie Graham. Gets a bye in the first round. He gets Chris Seaton, 21 to 12. He ended that one in a round limited format. Got to 21. Next game, round three, he pulls Ty Lopez. Does the same thing. Wins that one 21 to 7. Talking to Jamie Graham right before the tournament was coming in the building a little bit. Um, you know, we're all wondering about the shoulder, right? Uh, what was it? Uh, one of the first opens. Uh, he went out and was chucking a football. Yeah, and, and, that, and, I, and I heard a different story. I, I heard a completely different story. So I, I, I have not talked to Jamie yet, so I'm going to wait wait to divulge what I heard until I actually hear it from Jamie. But I heard a completely different story, and I've heard that it's not 
nearly as severe as a lot of people were saying. Yeah, so, so that's kind of uh, – it started out with the football. Uh, that took him into the next open, and it was just disastrous. Uh, the shoulder was a mess. Um, but since then, you know, my man's been working out. You know, he's putting a lot of effort into, you know, we talk about getting your mind right, getting your body right as well. Um, so he said he did kind of tweak it a little bit lifting. Um, he has confirmation that it is. It's just a muscle. So he said he feels really good today. Uh, this is the first time, you know, I guess his first opportunity to, to show that he's still here because at the last open, I want to say he took second to last in the bracket. So, look, here he is in round four of a shootout. Hey, the Jamie Graham might be back. So I'm excited to see how this plays out. It looks like we're going to go down one more time, and then we will be set here for this matchup. Again, if you're just tuning in here this afternoon, we've already wrapped it up on the women's single side. Rosie Streaker just crushed it today. Staying right down the middle, so strong as always. And then no surprise on the other side, Cheyenne Renner slash Bubenheim. So that will be your matchup in Glendale, Arizona for the first automatic bid in the Pro Shootout Series coming up in 2023. So again, Cheyenne Bubenheim against Rosie Streaker and Doing the same thing now on the men's side, just working all the way down to the finals, and the finals we played out in Glendale. All right, looks like we are set to make these bags live. Trey Baker, can he keep his day alive? Here against the top five player in the world. Tried to get a peek of Trey's bag. I can't make out what they are. He's got a BG shirt on. Looking at the carpet, it doesn't look herringbone. Those might be Vikings, uh, but Jamie Graham coming out with the vengeance, so he's choosing a bit slower, slower bag. We know how well he throws the incinerators. Coming out with a little bit higher friction bag here with some speed control with the vengeance. See how this plays out. Trey Baker gets a buy. Look at the bracket real quick. He also got a buy in the first round. Gets Alex Lippard 13 to 10 in the second round. And a, actually a pretty big win over a Jordan Kimbrell, who's always a pretty steady pro. He wins that win 9 to 6. That got him here against the match against Jamie Graham. Final bag here for Trey. And wow, hops it over the hole and off the board. So points here for Jamie Graham. In the first round. There's an example of just doing too much. That was a, that was an extreme cut bag. So he was trying to cut around an 8 o'clock block. So I think just go up the middle. And here's where using the slick side of your bag. If you have comfort there, you throw a normal inside arm hole shot. And the slick side is going to find the hole. I don't think a cut was necessary there. Could look, uh, do a quick peek at the brackets as they're uh, coming down here in this next round. So in bracket A, we have four players left. Logan Chamberlain still alive. Currently down 8-0 to zero against Travis Graven. This one, Jamie Graham and Trey Baker. We also, oh, we just got a win there. So only two players left on the other side. Trevor Kufis trying to play to get to the king seat match in Ashton Spees. That's what's going to be left there in this bracket A. There was an attempt at the slick side, so he was a little bit right, and that's why play, that's why players are usually afraid to use that. And typically when you have big gaps in speeds, so I don't know what bags they're throwing, but let's say this is a 4.7 or a 4.8 bag. That fast side is going to be about twice as fast. So, you know, when you have extremes, wow. flipping it over, you know, you, you got to be able to change your, your, your swing a little bit. Yeah. Now the plus round here for Jamie Graham. Able to tack on three more with Trey's bag off the back. So 6 nothing now, Jamie Graham, after the first two rounds. Well, of course, it was Jamie. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think, didn't Jamie win the first shootout last year? Um. Yes. I yeah, he, he was up early. Round. I yep. think you're right. I think he just sat and watched the rest of the year. It's funny, you know, when, when it's the off season for us, it seems like it's been so long, but then we get here, and now all of a sudden that first pro shootout seems like it was just like a month ago. No doubt. That was the that bag was so perfect, and it didn't look like anything awesome. Jamie Graham came in with perfect control, bullied, took over the block position, a nice side-by-side, -side, and that forced Trey to go off the back. And a roll attempt from Jamie Graham ends up a little left. That's going to set up a field goal. We should see Trey Baker punch through this. And he rolls. I like a slick side coming through there to clean yeah. that up. 
This is this is just this is what just kills me, Anthony, when we start seeing this. It's just not, it's not, not the way to play. You're not going to win again at a consistent high level doing that. You've got to be able to push. You have to be able to collect. Got you to. have to do it. If you can you, try and get fancy and do all this new stuff if you want, but I'm telling you, you're not going to win at a high level consistently if you can't just do a just simple collect. You have to have it. There's a pile of laundry. I don't even know how that's going to play out. Yeah, Jamie was wondering, too. He was just looking down at the pile. And, you know, you know, the great example of it is what we just talked about with Zach Shibner, where he went slick side and was able to collect. Yes. It, was, it was a great example of, of having that, you know, bullet when you need it. Nine nothing, Jamie Graham, round number four. Yeah, you don't want to, you don't want to find yourself down nine zip to Jamie Graham. It's so hard just to pull out a win, but now you're going to give him a nine spot like that. That's tough to come back on. So for me, I'm just kind of looking, not necessarily as is Jamie Graham scoring, but um, for the shoulder purposes, you know, is, is he throwing a straight bag to the hole? Can he still roll? It requires more effort to roll. He just showed he can roll, so no pain may be there in the shoulder. Looking pretty good, and I love sitting there better there than in. Well, and you know, the the favorable position that Jamie is in is that his push shot, and I've talked to him about it many times, he doesn't really add a whole, I mean, sometimes if he has to, he will, but a lot of times with just a simple collect shot or push, he doesn't do anything different. Right. I like the stack. So he put that in a roll position ends up stacking on top that's going to make any type of a push he could air mail and not drag because jamie's weight is on it and there it is he shot the air mail if jamie wasn't sitting on top like that i think he drags that bag beautiful stack from jamie graham stays nine nothing We're on the round. Yeah, we are. They're just updated. So on to round number five. Here from the Myrtle Beach Sports Center Complex here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Just a few blocks from the beach. Beautiful day out here in South Carolina. Give you a quick update in bracket B. So, again, this is bracket A. Bracket B, we are down to three players. We got Byron Sisson, another rookie who's sitting in the kink seat match. Just got a win over Kobe Costanza. That's a big win for him. And then on the right side of that bracket, Ryan Hart going up against Kyle Malone uh, to get to Byron Sisson. Uh, I guess it's not a kink seat match. We're, we're single elimination, Jeff. So that's the championship match. Winner of that's going to go on to play Byron Sisson. Kyle Malone was my hot take this week. To win the shootout, still alive. That one also in, so it'll stay nine to nothing on the double four bagger wash. And we now move on to round number six. So when you're down nine to nothing against Jamie Graham, what what do you do? I mean, because now you're getting to the point, right? Almost halfway. Now you got to at least be thinking about something that you could try and do. Here's, what's, here's what makes Jamie Graham so special, Jeff. What do you want to do? Jamie Graham has an answer for it. Yeah. If he started throwing a block, no problem. I can roll, I can cut, I can air mail. If you want to run bags to the hole with him, Jamie Graham can just run bags to the hole with the best of them. So it, it's not looking good for my guy over here. Um, you just got to hope for some mistakes. And you have to hit your shots. You got to hit all your shots. Airmail's wide open, but with a nine-point lead, do you play it safe? Here's where the round limited comes into play. If this was a match to 21, I promise you Jamie Graham fires over the top. Up nine, he's going to he's gonna fire oh, it, and he hits it. Fires it anyway. I'm with you. I thought maybe just go in behind. Hey, you're up nine. Yeah. Make him shoot it. But it's Jamie Graham. And if I had an airmail like Jamie Graham's, I probably would have shot it too. Yeah. I'd have max confidence, man. Another well, roll that, attempt. That's where it makes it so difficult for us to predict because you never know where a player is at mentally. You know, in his mind, he's asking himself, hey, how good do I feel with it right now? Right. You know, we're talking strategies. They're basically just trying to figure out if they feel good with it or not. Fires that one off. Last bag for Baker and hits it on the backside. Slams that one in. A good hit for Baker. He needed something there. I, 
There's another mess. That might be a wash if I'm looking at it correctly. Or did he get a point off the back? Did he got a point. He got say, a point. Yeah, with, with Jamie's going off the back. All right, we talked about A. We talked about B. Quick update in bracket C. We're down to five players. Travis Purser, another uh, highly anticipated rookie coming in out of the Carolinas. Um, still in it. Austin Slobom, who was kind of quiet last year. Uh, Mike Ferrer is still alive. And then Damon Dennis and Alex Rawls going head-to-head -head right now to get to the semifinal match on uh, on that bracket. Wow. So that's going to be a good match. I, Damon Dennis currently up 12-9. I really thought this is going to be a critical year for Austin. You know, such a terrific college player, goes pro, very quiet last yep. year. It's a big year for slow bomb. Jamie Graham tried to throw a little bit of a reverse cut there. So he's trying to grab a bag off the left as a righty. So he's going to try and tilt it in a different position. Gets oh, a piece, it doesn't go. Just trying to grab that corner. Nine to one. So Jamie just chewing up rounds here against Trey Baker as we, I think, move on to round number 10. Or eight, no, just round number eight. The final bracket D. This is the match we saw a little earlier with Jordan Power and Zach Let's see, four players left. We got Jeremiah Hector, who is probably one of the highest PPR pro, or rookies coming into the season this year. Not a lot of people talking about Jeremiah Hector, but watch out for that guy. Philip Lopez still alive. Josh Glover. And then, of course, Zach Schnibber, who we saw a little bit earlier. Roll attempt for Jamie. He gets up in there. He's got two bags to work with. That's going to be a draggable bag on an airmail if there's a block condition. I, I like the step out. That's what we're going to get. So he's got options here, Jeff. If you look at the two orange bags, it's basically look at it as a field goal. There's a push kind of right between the two orange bags on the left. Mm -hmm. Slick side, of course. Jamie Graham loves that shot. Now the airmail is open as well. He has two bags to work with. I don't mind the airmail now. Why? Because his opponent is on the back of the hole. Anytime your opponent is a back of the hole like this, you go long, you drag him off with you. So it's like a wash, you know? You miss the airmail, you drag him with you. I like an airmail here. You're long, you pull your opponent off. You're short, you have a chance to collect two bags. You hit it clean or you drag. I do like an airmail. Jamie taking a long look at this one. Figuring you know what everything he's right now. Figuring a comfort, he's figuring score, round, everything. You right know what he's thinking? He's thinking wedge. He's thinking if I throw a slick side inside arm, there's a chance that all three of my bags wedge in the hole. So why not shoot the airmail now? Maybe I clean something out. He's doing the step out. So he's he's going to go. Let's see what we got here. Is he nope, try he's coming back tight. <laughs> so tight makes you think airmail, right? I like the airmail right now, only because he has another bag left in his hand and his opponent's back of the hole. I love an airmail right here. We saw him hit one clean two rounds ago. An eight-point lead, round number eight. Third bag for Graham. Oh, oh my gosh. And wants him. Stop playing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, like I was saying, if he goes long, he pulls his opponent off. Yeah, he went long just enough to knock his opponent off and go in the hole. Another roll attempt. That's a good bag. That is actually a good bag. Now I think the push is even... I think that changes his mind on the slick side push with that bag on the back. Say decision time again. Man, now new options. Here's what I kind of like. I kind of like a kamikaze, basically a sacrificial bag. If he came up the right side and just clipped his bag on the right, knocked that bag at the 4 o'clock position in, then that would force um, force an airmail. So Jamie's going to take his second and final timeout here in round number 8. What a fun round. We got, we got a lot of things to work with here, a lot of options to talk through. Here's the and one shot again. Boom. So we're going to get that slick side push we were talking about the first time. It's going to come through hot. Boom. There it is. He'll take it. He lost one but gained three. I 
That was a fun set. There was a lot of things that could happen there, a lot of options to talk through. And then with a guy like Jamie Graham who has multiple shots, it gives you more, more, more opportunities for things to, to, to do on, in those cases, more scenarios. Did you see Trey Baker's bag on the backside? Almost came back in. <laughs> Almost came in. Just wouldn't fall for him. That was a block attempt from Baker to try and get something going here. What do we have? Four playing rounds to work with. 13 to 1. There it is. That's the block he wanted. So this is where it gets fun. I love this. I, Jamie Graham can roll. He could airmail. Uh, I think we see a roll in this case being outside arm. Here's the roll. Oh, he gets up. He needed about another half rotation to at least be in the block position. Hey, good slick side oh. from Trey Baker. There we go. He's going to leave that blocker there. That was Jamie, dude. Now he's got a stack with his on top there. Maybe just push. Oh, he's going to back block. He's going to side by side. Perfect. The, the roll just hasn't been working for Trey. Hit hit the airmail, man. He hasn't been able to get that thing to get. It comes up short every time. He hasn't been able to get that extra half a roll. I think fire it. He's going up. There you oh, go. Wow. Big shot for Trey Baker. Trying to stay alive here. That was a good set for him. We got a block. We got a perfect block out of him. We got a slick side get around on the outside of that block, and then he finished up with an airmail. Trey Baker showing what, what shots he has to work with here. 13-3. to three. First bag honors now for Baker. Pulls the string out of right Perfect. Front. Perfect. And an inside arm. You don't want to be too far out. We might get a cut. We're going to get a little cut bag. Perfect. Side by side. I love that. That is literally the, the by-the-book shot there in a round-limited format. Oh, bounces There overhead. he goes. There you got it. There's the roll. He just looked at the stands and said, there it is. Finally got it. How high of a stack can you bounce that over? Uh, I've seen rolls go over stacks of six. Now, I'm sure it was like a one in 20 thing, but that'll give you an idea of how much hop you can 20? get. Yes. That's pretty good. <laughs> We should get an airmail here. I don't like. Hey, leave that. Leave that stack there for Jamie to deal with. He's going up. Oh, he just missed it. Just a hair deep. <laughs> what happened the last time he was in this situation, Jeff? Jamie and won him off the back. <laughs> well, it's set up perfectly if he wants it. Oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> we. He almost peeled his block or his uh, stack bag. So he had a bag sitting on top of the pile, almost peeled it off the top. Need another airmail. And hope for a drag to get back into this. Uh, bounces off of Jamie's bag and all the way off. Disaster for Baker. See, on gives him a point. I do again. I like the airmail when your opponent is back of the hole. We're gonna push. Good oh, bag. Moving the whole pile in. So strong. Yeah, for all those out there, anytime your opponent is back of the hole, your airmail percentage doesn't need to be as high. So, if you're a 25% airmailer, I would say don't airmail that. You put your opponent on the back of the hole, and all of a sudden, I would say now airmail it. Mm. Because when you're long, you pull your opponent off with you, and then you have a chance right. for an and one, of course. Two rounds left. That's actually the first, like, bad miss I've seen from Jamie Graham yeah. in this game. So it'll be 11 rounds in, you know, let's say after 40 bags, he finally threw one that was just like way off. Beautiful bag from Jamie Graham. I like that better there than in. Win up significantly in a round limited format. That's going to force Trey Baker to do something special. Slick side coming through hot. What a oh bag from gosh. Trey Baker. Just cleans it all up. How many bags were sitting there? It was like four four bags. Oh, another miss from Jamie Graham. Is this looking at the PPR here for both of them? Chance to pick up five? That would make things interesting anyway. Slick side. Oh, and it's deep. 
Missed opportunity for a big round. I like the choice of slick side. You don't want to come up short on an open hole. You maximize your hole friendliness. He has had a little, it feels like it's playing slow for him just because his roll's been coming up short. I think that was the right choice. Just It just came through too hot. Winner of this is going to get Travis Graven, another pro. I believe, if memory serves me right, Graven was one of those that came out of the pro qualifier. One of the 32 that came out of the uh, out of the pro qualifier at, at Worlds. So anyone making it through that gauntlet is going to have some skill. And Graven getting there, going through a Logan Chamberlain, winning that went 19 to five. That's who the winner of this one's going to get. Ten point lead, final round. Oh wow, that one skips all the way up and in. Jamie just trying to get out of this one without That's a bad game. There is yep. nothing you can do. Trying to avert anything disastrous here and just move on. Trey looking at the board hard, but there's nothing he can do. One last bag here for Jamie, and this one is over. So Jamie Graham, really never in doubt, takes care of Trey Baker as he will advance here in the men's singles pro shootout here in Myrtle Beach. We will be back. More matches left ahead as we work our way all the way down to the final two here on the men's singles side. Myrtle Beach, back with more right after this. Back here in Myrtle Beach with Anthony Io and I'm Jeff McCarriger. Thanks for tuning in here this afternoon from the Palmetto States. I'm glad Anthony could make it. Taking the red eye from Colorado and getting here to Myrtle Beach just in time to hop on the air. So, again, congratulations to Jamie Graham and that win over Trey Baker to advance. And as we move on, Trevor Kufus against Ashton Spees. As again, we're going to work it down here on the men's single side all the way down to our final two. We've got our final two women that uh, – We'll be traveling out to Glendale, Arizona, Super Bowl weekend, trying to win that first automatic bid, first pro shootout. Cheyenne Bubenheim and Rosie Streaker made it all the way down to the final two. We're doing the same thing here on the men's single side. All right, Anthony, what do you got over there? 
Jeff, we're in bracket A. I'm looking at, so these guys are coming out of the left side. I would not have picked these two guys to come out of the left side of this bracket. Now, now don't get me wrong. These guys are very talented. Spees, certainly one of those players that have shown elite level talent in the past. But look at the players who are gone from the same side of this bracket. Frank Maudlin, out. James Baldwin, out. Wow. Jordan Camba in that half. All on this All left side? in the same high side. Trevor Brooks, oh. gone. Um, there was another one in here that I saw. Noah Almanza in the bottom side. All those guys done. These are the last two guys standing on the left side of the bracket. So a bit of a surprise to see these two faces. But, hey, that's what you get Stacked. from a single elimination. Yeah. Round limited shootout format. It's anybody's game. Yeah, we talk about it all the time, just like the NCAA tournament in basketball. Just so many upsets. But but that being said, that I mean that was a killer bracket. No doubt. I mean, just let's look at uh, so Trevor Kufis. Let's look at his run. A rookie last year. This will be his second year in the league. He gets a bye in the first round. Danny Seals. He gets the win over Danny Seals, twenty-one to three. Moves on to Frank Modlin. Wins that one, twenty-one to eight. And then just got the win over Trevor Brooks, 16-10. to 10. That got him to this matchup here against Jeez. Spees in the fifth round. Winner of this moves to the championship match, waiting for a player to come out of the right side. Big shot by Spees to spin that one around. Good use of the slick side. I don't think he hates that because his lane was pretty messed up. Oh, and he definitely doesn't hate it now. Spee's basically handing him a point in for a 10-9-1. Big miss. Just hammers it off the front of the board. Oh, and, oh, the lefty hanging up on the right side. Can't capitalize. Those are the fantasy. I, if I, I believe I have a little history with those just because Yeti Irwan threw those bags last year. Uh, Yeti out of my camp in Denver, Colorado, so I get to play with Yeti. I've actually played in tournaments with her. If those are the bags we were throwing, I think they were. It's like a linen style, a linen uh, slow side. So he's going to have a little bit more speed, a little bit more hole friendliness. Apologies if I'm wrong on that, but I believe that's what we're going to get out of those, those fantasies. Three nothing lead out of the gates for Ashton Spees. Crystal asking, did the Young Guns make it out of the high school tournament? I believe singles is actually going to be starting this afternoon. So nothing has started yet with the uh, with the high school division. Singles today, I believe. Hey, Jeremiah, yes. Yeah, I was just talking about you. Oh, did you? They're back for Kufus. Plugs it up, and now Spee's a long look at the hole. <laughs> Something wants to fall yeah. there, Jeff. I can't get a peek. We got red on red. I know. It's tough to see, isn't it? And, oh, oh right he just top. takes them all. Big hit. That was... Did he get two for one of that? I think, I think so. Yeah. What a shot by Kufus. Yeah, Chris in the chat is any of the or any of the college games live. I know college is popping off right now as we speak, but I don't believe there's a broadcast over there. Uh, so you're gonna have to catch uh, maybe some some phones that are pushing live matches into Facebook. Kufus now with a one point lead, four to three. I couldn't tell if that was a two for one or a three for one on that shot that he laid right on top of the hole. It touches that one as it falls. Side by side, right in front now, third bag for Kufus. Says he'll take it. Spees, oh wow, just touches it. I mean, that's a, that's a good spot. I was going to say, it just puts it right in front of the side by side here for Kufus. He's a lefty, so it's going to force oh. him up. Good hit from Kufus. And oh, my just gosh. Takes them all in. Big time shot. That is such a difficult shot. I mean, it 
to the average eye, they're going to be like, oh, he just pushed a bunch of... No, he had to come in hot. His line had to be dead perfect because oh. even if slightly off to the left or right, that throw bag is gone. It is, it's, it's not going to make it in the hole. Boy, and you're right. It was right on target looking at that replay again. Stays 4-3, to three, round number 5. Just drips in. Good replace. Speed's going to keep himself at that level one in the diamond position. That's enough to gain him some points. So he just earned himself two points off of that block. If he can clean up and he ends up to the left, gives it right back. That's the big thing. You can block, but you got to score off of it. Koof is looking to push through all this to sit 10. Oh, my gosh. Two to the left. Last two out to the left there, Jeff. Cost him two points. Six to three. How about that Damon Dennis matchup? you get a final on that one? Yes, we can get you a final on that one. So this is bracket A. Move over to bracket B. He's not in B. Let's try C. That is bracket C. Damon Dennis ended up getting that one over Alex Rawls, 12 to nine. Oh, wow. He's already played his next match, Jeff. He got a win over Mike Ferreira, 23 to eight. Damon Dennis in the final of bracket C. Does he know he's playing yet? Travis Purser. So we have another uh, another rookie coming out. I had Travis Purser going in the third round of the draft in my own mock draft. A very talented rookie coming into the league this year. Made a lot of noise at Worlds. Went pretty deep. Now finding himself in the final of bracket C at shootout number one. So he is... What, two wins? Two wins away from TV? Just got word from Wally, by the way. For those of you interested on the college side. Good pickup. Uh, Landon Crabtree into the final eight in singles on the college side. Okay. We'll broadcast tomorrow. Excellent. Yeah, I was talking to him. Uh, actually, as soon as I walked in the building, I caught Crabtree. Now, he's unique. Uh, he's just like Gustafson, Jeff. He's got the reverse Mamba. So there's only, I only know three players at a competitive level that throw a, uh, basically a screwball, <laughs> if you will. So he throws a counterclockwise bag as a righty, which is what lefties do. He's rot rotating it the opposite way. It's a hard slider. Oh, no. Nice level one. It's squared up. Spee's looking to just kind of punch through it. Off to the right, collectible, he doesn't hate it. He knows he's gonna have to do some work to go get it. He is outside arm. Mm -hmm. oh. I don't hate the idea. Kufis was trying to end up a little bit to the right side of that block to prevent the collect. Missed it too far right. So what's Kufis do here now with his third bag? Goes right in behind it. So he's the front block in both bags, so we should get a tough pusher and airmail here. He's going up. Yep. Ooh, he gets a little clippy on the back, so. Get some help. Kufis has to go in to score. Otherwise, he's given up a point. We should get an. He doesn't have slick side in the hand. That tells me he's going to go airmail. No, oh, he's going to roll. Yeah, I didn't know Kufis had a roll. Hey. Slips off to the left. That's the beauty of seeing the first pro event to start the season, Jeff. You can see what people have been working on in the off season. I didn't know Kufis had a roll. Now, he didn't get the roll, but he definitely put it in a roll position. We got a tie game at six, round number eight of 12. And it's going to be tough to roll those fantasies, man. Um, you know, rollability isn't high. They're rollable, but rollability isn't high. Hmm, looks like he's trying to lay that one right in front of the hole and misses left a little bit of a lane for Spees and he goes right and now he's frustrated Kufus right in front Spees pushes them all off to the left we should get a slick side push right up the middle he's got a bumper left and right that's what we're going to get and he hits it good bag for Kufus now Spees touches it, can't collect it. 
Spee's coming through with the stick side of that Viper R. In for two points. Slick side to guarantee wow. max friendliness. I love that. I love him flipping over to a slick side. Good round. When you have a hole surrounded like that, a bag on the left, a bag on the right, improve your chances of getting in the hole and flip that bag over. Good so many round. times we'll see a high friction carpet bag come in and then just scoot just short, you know, just kind of come up a little bit short. So Kufus takes the lead. Nice lane side. Outside arm for Spees. He wants to control his speed. Perfect speed control. Ends up in a side-by-side. -side. He wants to be a little bit tighter to the bag. It did kind of creep out to the left a little bit. This is where it gets fun. Should get an airmail. He's going up. Oh, splashed it a little bit short. I don't mind clearing out the coming through and kind of pushing out the right side. He did try and roll. He's going up. Oh, worst case scenario, Jeff. Oh my gosh, that one stings. Oh, oh and Spies then he backs puts it up. It in. <laughs> oh, wow. Koof is sitting three. He's got to have some, something happen here. Is that a six? I believe that's a six three showing on the board. Is Yep. On for four points. He wants to take a peek how much hole he has. Take a look at what Kufus has sitting in the hole. It looks like you have two foot in the water. And that fantasy, I mean, it's it's got some hole friendliness to it. You don't want to you don't want to mess with that too much. I think you just go on and take your four. If he had a roll, I wouldn't hate a roll kind of working into the nine o'clock. Yep, just boards it. Yep. You're right. Puts it on. Still going to be a big plus round here for Spees. Koof is sitting down to put the score in. He need a little bit of a break there, Jeff. So lead change make it 10 to 8. Well, Spees now is on top. Three rounds left. Well, we were talking about Jamie Graham earlier. It would be interesting to see, you know, how that shoulder bugs him here in the first day of you know, live competition as the day goes on. It's a long day. No doubt. Speaking of, the Jamie live? Graham, uh, Travis Graven match has started. Okay. Graham up four to one. Winner of this is going to get the winner of that one. Graham currently up four to one. Oh, seven one. We just had a score update and they are in the fifth round. Kufus gives a little stinky face as that one was able to slip around and in. Good bag. Works the left side. Doesn't help collect Spees off the right. Spees going to have to go get a piece here. Oh. Ah, he gets a piece. It doesn't move. Chance here to tie this one up. And gets it. Just slips it in that Ooh. front side. Big round. That Viper R wanted to go. That front, that top 12 o'clock corner just barely holding on. So now just two rounds left and tied again at 10. Let's go. Tie bag game. Two rounds, eight bags, huh, Jeff? Round 11? Yeah, so eight yep. bags for each player. First shot always so critical. Love right it. Right in front. How does Spees deal with it? It oh, pays off. Him off to the left. It Spies. pays off, Jeff. Now he's got to go earn it. Spies he's got to get that bag head. in. Oh. Gave it right back. Yep. So the key there is Spees needed to kind of get up in the hole. He couldn't dump his opponent in and be really short because on a back block, he wouldn't be able to drag. Let's see if he's got a cut bag. He's going to come through hot. Oh, oh. good pickup for Spees. What a shot. So what he did on that, Jeff, if you want to maximize your cut, you front load it also. If your bag comes in nose down in a tilt position, you get max cut, and that's what he got there. He got a – I wish we could measure it like a curveball, like a two-foot curveball. I mean, yeah. he, he, he moved quite a bit, quite a distance. Boy, just picked that bag out, pulled it in. Jeez, wow, what a shot. Here it is. That cut push right here. Could have just won the game for Ashton Spees. 
Oh. You see how you see the logo? If you look at the screen, you just see the logo coming at you. That means it was front tilted. That gives you max cut. Just pulls it out of the pile and pulls it in 13 to 10. And final round. First one in for Spees, a critical first bag. Short Trying to manufacture left. some points here. He's got to do it, right? Last round, yep. he had to try something. Yep, just missed it too far left. We should get another block here from Kufis. He definitely wants to get more center. Ah, now he set up a little field goal, a little split here to win it for Spees, and he hits it perfect. That is bad game. Same shot right down the middle. Back and forth. This was tied three times. And now Ashton Spees will put this one away in advance here in Myrtle Beach. Jeez, what a match. Came down to the wire, tied at 10. And Spees able to put it away. So we continue to move on and take a break. Here from Myrtle Beach, alongside Anthony, I'm Jeff. Back with more here in just a minute. All right, we are back here in Myrtle Beach. Wow, great look right there inside the Myrtle Beach Sports Center Complex. Just a couple of uh, blocks away from the Atlantic Ocean. Beautiful day here in South Carolina. Alongside Anthony Allen, I'm Jeff McCarriger. Our thanks to Wally helping out. Touching all the buttons as he does so well. <laughs> does that sound dirty? Yeah, he likes that one. He likes that one. All right, coming up next, Philip Lopez making a run against Zach Shibner, who we saw earlier, Anthony. First chance I've had to see Shibner. I'm not sure if you've had a chance to watch him live, but, man, terrific performance we saw about a half an hour ago out of him. Yeah, no, this is it. This is the first time peak for me. So, um, hey, congrats to him. He's making it deep. And speaking of deep, we can just kind of run through these brackets real quick. We are getting down to the last couple of players in each bracket. So if we start with bracket A, we just saw the win by Ashton Spees over Travis Kuf Trevor Kufis. He's waiting for the winner of Travis Graven and Jamie Graham. Jamie Graham currently up 14-3. to three. So down to those last three players in A. Bracket B, we got two players left. Kyle Malone and Byron Sisson. I can see them playing right over here on court one or two. So that championship match has already fired up. Byron Sisson, a, a, a rookie coming in, talked a little bit about him uh, on, on around the ACL already. So he's on radar. I mean, he looks nice. He has wins against elite level players. Right now, down 14 to 2, though, to Kyle Malone. Mm. Kyle Malone just looking nice this season. He said he's throwing bags actually more than he has before right now, so it's showing. Bracket C, Damon Dennis on a run, but he had just ran into a red hot Travis Purser. He's down 13 0, Jeff. 
Travis Purser, another rookie coming in that we're keeping close eyes on. Yeah, that's another um, one we can see right here. He's fire right now. And the last one, Bracket D. Two players left right in front of us that we're watching here. So that's going to conclude your shootout one. All right, these bags were alive, by the way, as Shibner a little bit short left. And it's going to end up being a couple of points for Shibner. And away we go here in this matchup here on the main live stream court. Getting a first look for myself at Philip Lopez for the start of the pro season right away. Got a different bag in his hand. Yep. Um, you know, we've got these lucky bags. I I was trying to get a peek. It looked like the pro snipers. I think you're right. I think, okay. I think it going is to too. snipers. So he's going to go with a little bit, a little bit faster choice on the bag. So we would basically have polar opposites. I mean, I don't know much about this SIVA bag in front of us here. If it's a SIVA bag, I believe it is. But I can tell the speeds are much, much different. So Zach's going to be throwing a really slow, high-friction bag. He's going to try and cut. He's going to try and roll. And then Philip Lopez is just going to throw his front-loaded, you know, just a whole bag that he's so good at. Roll attempt. Third bag here for Philip. He's going up. And hits it. Wow, perfect shot. Philip Lopez, man, his 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 airmail is ridiculous. We got to see him highlight that all season last year. Made a run at Worlds. We saw the best or the the biggest comeback in the history of of uh, in cornhole in that final against Jay Rubin and Jordan Power. What was that one like? 19, 20, 26, 20 to two. Two. Oh my gosh. Funny story. Uh, you're right. It was 20 to 2 because I was just talking to Jay about that recently. Jeff, those guys ran into each other a couple weeks ago um, in a regional of some sort, something local. Jay Rubin and Jordan Power down 20, 20 to, to 0. I thinking that one. Yeah, I heard about that <laughs> one. They yep. came back and tied it. Didn't win it, but they almost they almost outdid their uh, their 20 to 2 comeback again against the um, – you know, the, the best team in the league last year. By the way, real quick, just got another note from Wally. Chris Fagan has also made it into the final eight on the college side. So, As expected. I expected Chris Fagan uh, to come out as well as Crabtree. There's a handful They're both that in. should be bottom eight. Yep. Maybe we can give uh, Wally, if you have an update on, on Brennan. Jake Brennan in college, if you have an update on him, see if he's left. Lopez one for one. Both bags flanking either side. Shibner says, oh, well, I'll take it. Yeah, I don't want to leave your fourth bag short. We got to step out. Lopez going to try and bank off of his left bag and creep in. I don't know. Is he just trying to lay that on the board? I think he was trying to bank off of the the. Uh, he didn't have any juice the on that bag at all. to the left. No, it was he had it tilted throwing hand, so he was trying to get a right to left cut, trying to sneak around the left side of that. It had been a tough shot. Yeah. It was one of those where like, eh, I'm just gonna try it. I think I'm safe to try it. Shibner with a two nothing lead, round number four already. Hmm. That's a pro sniper, though, with a deep foot in the water. That could walk. No help from Zach. That's perfect. This will be a big bag here. Tell us if it's going to make its way back. Oh, that's nice. That is nice. He has fully collected that bag. If one goes, they both go. <laughs> Just inching their way in. Two bags to work with. We're going to get a full step out. Lopez on an outside arm. He can move right to left. A little bit tougher with the pro snipers, but he can do it. That was a high, that was a really high block attempt. But on a step out, I'm a little curious, I'm a little curious of what that was, because it didn't have much of a tilt to it. Ah, Zach gives it right back. He was in for two points. Two bag fours. He's left, he's less short of the hole there, Jeff. And it's gonna cost him here. Yep, Phillips slides it in. 
Let's keep an eye on that. Two rounds in a row, he couldn't get that fourth bag to the hole, coming up short. So on to round number five. Jordan McClellan saying go, Philip Lopez. Got some Lopez fans out there. Jackson Gore saying Jake is on ESPN. And Jay Rubin reminding of us of the 22 to 20 loss. I got you, buddy. Yeah, that, he almost came back on that one, man. That's crazy. Beautiful block. I love that deep. Outside arm. This is perfect for Zach's game. He's going to come around the right side. Do we get a step out from Lopez now? He does have two. He goes for the step out. So he wants to hammer the left side of that red bag. He wants to move it a little bit and travel past it to collect or push. A little bit right, but he's okay. It's a miss that worked for him. Wait, he that? still has the lane. He was using every little bit of the mat. I mean, just <laughs> a pinky toe, basically. No doubt. In the box. We should get a block right on the left side. Oh, no. He oh. set up a field goal. So here's the key here. Lopez definitely wants to touch the left side, the left bag. He doesn't want to collect that middle one. A little bank, kind of a split. Ah, oh, he's right. That was two bags. Two in a row, he missed his mark right. This is three rounds in a row now. That last bag has been a bit of an issue. Yes. Phillip. Stays 2 nothing. Round number six. Appreciate you, Kevin. Shibner frustrated with that one too far off to the right, potentially. Yeah, Donnie talking about Lopez's demeanor. Yeah, you don't get much emotion out of him, Hudge. You've called his matches a numerous times on ESPN. He's he's pretty just dead face, you know? I mean, you don't get much from him. I think that's a I think that's huge in this game. I mean, the, so much of this I think is a is a head game. Well, I mean, we've talked about it with with players who are very animated, right? Like a Cody Henderson or a Jordan Power that can cut both ways, right? True. Yeah, they feed off their own energy, right? They 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 kind of pump themselves up. Zach Owings in college final eight. Appreciate you, Wally. Let's see if he comes up short on this one. He's not going to come up short. He comes through hot. He's like, <laughs> I'm going to make sure this gets hole deep. Last bag, and that time finishes it off for Lopez. So are going to have a little bit of trouble with that final bag, three rounds in a row, but that one he was able to put in the hole and put it away. Chilling. Eric Coons out of Colorado chiming in yeah. to the feed. Round seven. After this round, we'll take a quick peek at some of the other brackets, see if any any brackets have finished up. There's a couple, couple brackets a, a round or two away from being done. Jeff, do you know if we just take the we just take the final two? That's right, final two to the broadcast. That's going to be an hour long broadcast. You're going to get women's singles, men's singles, and doubles in a shortened hour long broadcast. Out in Glendale, yep. Super Bowl weekend. <laughs> Love that bag. Just flying in at an angle, kind of little cut on it. <laughs> well, Shibner still with one of my favorite shots I've seen on the day. Obviously loves to cut it. But when he had to, had those two bags on the right, remember, needed to collect, went yes. to the slick side, just softly collected everything in. Oh, an airmail attempt for Lopez. It's going to cost him. I was just going to say, Jeff, seven rounds of play. We've only scored three points and then given up a three there on the missed airmail. Travis Purser takes down David Dennis. All right, we got an update from Bernie Neighbors, the man, saying one of the brackets has finished up. Here it is. Bracket C is done. Travis Purser coming out of bracket C. He's going to make it on one more win to get on ESPN for the rookie. Coming out in his first official pro tournament, wow. potentially on ESPN. Wow. 
Nice cut. That was a that was a really de- his cut bag. I mean, that thing almost stands yep. up tall. He really tilts it. I oh, did not wow. know Lopez. Lopez. That was a re- I didn't know Lopez had a reverse cut. For those out there that couldn't see bag profile, he changed the angle of his bag to throwing hand low, or excuse me, non-throwing hand low. He reverse cut that thing. That was great. Went left to right on the outside of hand. Impressive. Slides that one easy down the middle. That cut bag is going to order. That reverse cut is going to earn him two points here in this round. He needs it down six to zero. Huge fourth bag, round number eight, and oh, missed it. Man, left two points out there. Another bag four miss. Oh, and that could be critical. Six nothing. Round number nine now coming up. Yeah, let's look at that bracket C real quick. Who's in that bracket? You got Ryan Smith. You got Derek King. You got Alan Rawls, who's been training up. Uh, Steven Bernaset, Derek Holland, who's throwing out of his mind right now. Alex Rawls, Damon Dennis, just to name a few. Josh oh. Holland, Mark Richards. Oh, wow. Pretty good win. Pretty good bracket. That's a good, bra- yeah, good bracket. All to of win. those people, and who comes out of it? Travis Purser. Jeez. Congrats to Travis Purser. Third bag for Lopez. Ah, Upset with himself again. Now we're starting to see some emotion out of Phillip. Shaking his head a bit. Shipner's, gosh, wow. I mean, he's just got that spot. Shipner's getting it done here. Yep. And again, the way that he can go from slick side to sticky side, or vice versa, really more on the sticky side than able to go to that slick side when he has to. It's impressive. Nice day. Hit for Shibner, now an eight to nothing lead, round number ten. Update in bracket A. We were talking about Jamie Graham uh, winning over Travis G- Graven. That one is done, so he's on to the championship match. He's going to pull Ashton Spees. That is your final of bracket A. Jamie Graham versus Ashton Spees. Ashton said he's trying to ruin everybody's betting lines. He wasn't on there. <laughs> Ashton, Ashton didn't get on the DraftKings money lines. He's going to blow it all up. <laughs> I uh, love it. Oh, what a shot. Hey, we have to point out that Zach just threw a slick side cut. That's interesting because what he gets out of it, he got that bully. He kind of got a little bit more work to the right before it cut. That's what we are just talking about. Just, just to have that bag, you know, in his arsenal to be able to throw when he has to. The perfect bag would be to wedge right up in the field goal, right in that 7 o'clock and stop right there. That's a great bag. You asked for it. Beautiful. And it paid off because Big Lopez time. was going to collect that bag yep. off the right, didn't get it. Holy. Was that a six a, spot? I wow. It, yeah, 14 to nothing now. Round number 11. I'm blown away right now. Lopez not even on the board right now. I mean, Zach has been playing a... You know, a very strategic game. We're not going to see how he won in stats. We're going to look this thing up. Lopez just has not been able to lay that block where he's wanted to. He's just missed it. Shimmer, easy shot. Just going right around it. Spot is still open for him. Still going to be open. Same thing coming up. Yeah, Zach, I mean, he's just got that spot that he's just hitting right now and just cutting it right to left. Good piece for Lopez. Running out of time. Yep. Mm, that one could have just about put this one away. Lopez airmails it. And that's going to be 16 to nothing. So this one is over. Oh, Kimberly Jenkins is in now. So she made the final eight on the TV for the college national championship. So round 12, they will throw this one only for fun, though. This one's over. Wow, 16 to nothing. I'm so impressed. I, th- I think I'm probably most impressed with Shimmer of all the players that we've seen so far today. Hey. A small sample size. Obviously, it's a big field. But of just the players we've seen, the way that he can go from that sticky side play to the slick side for the collects and the push, I mean, just I love it. This one is officially over. 
Zach Shibner continues an incredible run today here in Myrtle Beach. Wow, impressive. So we continue our march all the way down to the final two here on the men's singles pro shootout here in Myrtle Beach. Back with more again just here in a minute. All right, welcome back to Myrtle Beach, and we're going to have just a small delay here before we uh, get our matchup and find out who we're going to have, because what we're waiting for, Anthony, I'm not sure if you can find it. I don't mean to put you on the spot. But no worries. I think we're waiting for one more bracket final to be complete. Is it that one right there? Have you got it? Is it Jamie? Yes. We got Jamie Graham and Ashton Spees on court 37, so I think we need that one to play through. Okay, so we're going to take another break. Just wanted to update you, so we're waiting for that one to go final. They just went onto the court, so we'll take another quick break, and then when we uh, come back, we'll obviously know a little bit more and know who's going to be here on the live stream court. Maybe we're going to have, maybe we'll have both of them. I don't know if we'll have both or just one. Can't Sound so while he's saying we might have a chance to get both of them. Let's so get both. We'll, we'll we'll at least have one we know when we when we come back. But again, so we are waiting for Jamie's matchup with Ashton Spees. Again, it should be underway right now. I'm not seeing a score there on your on your computer yet. Yeah, let's see here. We've got um, it just started, still at zeros. Okay, so on the court, just starting. So again, we'll take a break. And uh, keep you updated on that one and have, uh, obviously, the final four for you um, as we continue here from Myrtle Beach. So a quick timeout and back with more here in just a moment.
All right, back in Myrtle Beach again. We are waiting for our final four. Right now on the court, we've got Kyle Malone and Zach Shibner just kind of warming up. But uh, Travis Purser, uh, Wally, I know you don't have a mic, but he's got. I mean, this he's got to have the vote for one of the the biggest runs. I mean, took out Damon Dennis to win his bracket final to get in the final four. But geez, I mean, the run that he made, the names he had to go through, the names that were in this bracket, that was impressive. So, uh, what a run by Purser. Again, Shibner is in, Kyle Malone is in, and just waiting on the final between Jamie Graham and Ashton Spees. And, oh, wow, 18-2, to two, Jamie. So it looks like Jamie's going to be marching on into that final four. Not sure how far they are into that, but it might not matter anyway. Jamie might be able to just knock that one up early and move on. So, again, right now on our court, we've got Kyle and Zach just kind of warming up. But uh, we'll keep you updated. We will just have one match here on the live stream, I guess, due to time constraints so that they don't run too far behind. For those who don't know, this weekend is huge. It's not only the pro shootout for the men's and women's uh, singles and for the doubles, but also the high school championships are going on, college championships are going on, all the qualifying, all eight singles are in for uh, on the college side. Doubles will be later on. Um, and then, of course, uh, high school teams will be coming up later on this weekend. The big draft is coming up, the ACL Pro Teams draft. That will be uh, pretty much all day Sunday. Our draft coverage will be from 10 to 4 on the digital network. So, Anyway, so that is the situation right now from here in Myrtle Beach. We will take one more timeout, just waiting for Jamie's matchup to wrap up, and then we'll be on to our final four here from the beach right after this.
All right, we are set for the final four. It is official. Jamie Graham was able to wrap up uh, that final spot here in the final four, and it was uh, Kyle Malone and Zach uh, Schibner who were kind of warming up together, and that's going to be who we see. So they got down to the final four, and we were just talking with Wally during the break. So once they got down to the final four players, Anthony, they're going to seed them by how they finished in rounders today. So Jamie Graham ended up getting quickly the number one seed going 3-0 and today in rounders. Yeah, it looks like Jamie Graham at the nine. So he's the highest seed out of the bracket winners. If we scroll to the bottom, he is going to be playing Travis Purser. I think he was around 30-something, 30 35. So if this is the first, this, this matchup makes sense. These guys are the middle seeds. Would be your first playoff, if you will, yep. your bracket playoff. Winner goes to the broadcast. So just one win to get to, to TV. And again, this will be, from what I understand, this is going to be the only one that we have, so we won't get a chance to see uh, the other matchup. But this will be a good one. As you were just saying, the two middle seeds based on how they finished in rounders, Kyle Malone and Zach Schibner. So I think they're going to go down. Yeah, they're going to go down one more time, Anthony, and then we are set here for uh, to see who's going to. Head out to Glendale. Well, let's talk a little bit about Kyle Malone, man. This guy has been absolute fire since the start of the 23 season. He's killing it in conference. He just won his conference, really raising his his draft value. So a lot of talk about Kyle Malone going number one in the ACL team's draft. Completely makes sense with his committed pro partner as the number one pick captain. Um, but but Kyle saying, hey, I look, look at me. I'm out here winning in round-limited formats. We have to keep in mind that ACL team's format will be round-limited formats. He's winning a bracket, and he has a chance to get on TV here. So Kyle definitely locking himself up as potentially the best pick out of the draft. That or a, or a Jay Rubin sitting out there as clear favorites as a number one pick. Trying to look at Kyle's journey, I can see his last three wins were against Gavin Cano, who I know I've heard you and Trey talk a lot about. Beat him twenty to two, um, and then able to just squeeze past Tyler Poitras ten to six, and then a win over Ryan Hart nineteen to six to get into the championship game, where he beat Byron Sisson twenty to ten. So those are the last four matchups, and here we go. Away we go. Zach Shibner having really an impressive day. You and I just have, have been blown away by a few shots that he's had on the slick side to collect. And Kyle Malone obviously there on the right. The winner will be amongst the final two to play for that first automatic bid pro shootout, Glendale, Arizona, coming up Super Bowl weekend. And finally, different color, color bags. I feel like the last three or four matches, it's been like the exact yeah, same Yeah, we can tell bag. the difference for sure. Just kind of looking at these brackets. I mean, I'm seeing a bit of a trend. You know, we talk a lot about stats, you know, and we're still building stats. We know PPR is one stat we look at. Doesn't tell you anything. Uh, personally, uh, my opinion, I don't care about PPR. I care about a win. But until someone hits an 11, then you start talking about it yeah i mean that's pretty insane <laughs> hey and if someone loses shooting in 11 you know then we're yeah. gonna, what's going well, on like mad guy today losing hitting what 10.6 or something like that ppr and lost to an 11.3 kyle malone off to a two to nothing lead yeah so back to my point about ppr i was just kind of looking through i'm seeing a bit of a trend and again solidifying the argument that ppr doesn't win tournaments Let's look at Kyle Malone. He was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He was ninth in line in PPR in his bracket. Won his bracket. Let's look at bracket A real quick. Ashton Spees wins his bracket. Wow, I got to scroll a while. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleventh in PPR in his bracket. Wins his bracket. That was bracket A. Bracket C, Travis Purser wins his bracket. Now he was the number two in PPR. Okay, so there's an example. He didn't have the highest, but he was he was definitely up there. Alex Rawls with the highest PPR. Where did Alex Rawls finish? It's fifth. So last bracket D, and then we'll get back to the match here. Sorry, I just wanted to, to kind of look at that trend here real quick. I'm sorry, no breaking news on the court yet. Zach obviously uh, won his bracket. He's in front of us right now, and he was... 
third in PPR. So none of the brackets, none of the brackets did the number one PPR guy win. And in some cases, it was down there 11 yeah. in, in worst case. And again, like we talked about, I mean, it's, it's good to have this conversation while Shibner's on the court because you're right. I mean, PPR isn't the end-all, be-all. Um, but a guy like Shibner so far today has basically shown to be a five-tool guy, right? I mean, when he wants to roll, when the board gets all messed up and he wants to roll, he can do that. He can block. He can roll. But when he's had a couple of bags on the left or right side and he's had to hit a collect, he's got that shot too. No he's doubt. He's able to go to the slick side and be versatile. I mean, really showing himself as a five-tool guy here to get to this, you know, the brink of a championship. Hey, I'm going to – honestly, Kyle is going to be tough to yeah. beat right now. Um, Kyle, to me, looking like the guy who is going to win this shootout number one. Now, we're not going to get to see the whole thing played out. But right now, looking at this match here, Kyle's certainly the favorite coming in this one. He's just red hot right now. Yeah, Travis. Switching to bags this year, switching bag companies this year. He's, he's loving these Typhoons. I think it plays perfectly into his style. It gives him the right speed. Kyle's not going to roll. He's not going to do all this fancy stuff. Now, he can do stuff, but he is going to just beat you up to the hole. But he also has controlled speed. He can throw a block if he needs to. He can go side by side. He can push through stuff. His airmail is absolutely ridiculous. But he's just fire right now. He's going to be tough to beat. There it is. Look at that controlled speed. A level one flattened up. Let's see. Now, typically, Zach has been rolling. The lane side is going to take away the cut. So, I think we're just going to get a true roll. Options here. I like a slick side push or airmail. Now, in a round limited format, it does lean more towards the push. That's what we're going to get. Mm. I love it. He's hanging up on the right side. It's going to be tough to get into the hole there to wash without taking Kyle with you. He's going to have to bank off his bag with a slick side. Shibner speeds past it, goes deep. Oh, man. It's going to be a 6 to nothing lead now for Kyle Malone. And there you see live action right now. Jamie Graham is in play uh, with our other final. Travis Purser, again, who we were talking about earlier, made that great run through his bracket. And Wally, I think I asked you earlier, so Purser not a rookie? Been in and out of the league a little bit? So technically not a rookie this year? Not a pro last year. Okay. So what a run. Here it is, turning it back. Six to nothing, Kyle Malone. After the first three rounds. Yeah, you're right, Austin. I, I, I called out Ashton's name in air. That was Jamie Graham. Let's look at that real quick. <laughs> what bracket was that? Shibner bounces it in straight down the board. Yeah, Jamie Graham beat Ashton Speeds in the finals with the... With the seventh height, with the seventh ranked PPR, Jamie Graham won his bracket with the seventh PPR. Oh, Shibner just squeezes it past and puts it in. Nice round for Zach Shibner. So on to round number five already. Shibner able to get on the board to make it six to two. So impressed with his run today. Oh, trying to cut it, just missed his spot, so it goes a little bit deep. And an opportunity here in round number five for Kyle Malone. Such a pretty bag. I mean, absolutely flat as it floats past us in the air. And now that one is going to be in front of the hole by Shibner. Give something for Kyle to look at. The second bag here goes up top and hits the air. Telling mail. you, his re air mail is just ridiculous. Checks it up again, short. Here's where that controlled speed is going to come into play. I, I, hey, you're going to prevent two bags from going in. I like a block right between the two, oh. and he hits it. Perfect. Perfect shot. Oh, good hit. He flies it in, trying to grab the other one, couldn't do it. We haven't seen a lot of airmail from Zach today, so there's a 
There's a good show of he's got it. Oh, my gosh. And Malone hits another one. You see the step out? I love the step out. So he said, hey, I'm going to shoot over the top, but if I step out two or three feet, you know, either I'm going to go and, and one him off the back at that 2 o'clock position, or I'm going to find that 9 o'clock position a little better and, and less opportunity to drag his opponent. Steps Kyle Malone's out. airmail is nasty. Steps out and forward all the way into that front corner. He's so good right now. Yeah, just so precise. I mean, just executing perfectly. A 10-2 lead here in round number six. And Purser and Graham going on on the other court. We'll try and keep you updated on that. It looks like Jamie's jumped out to a 3 to nothing lead. Just a couple of rounds in on that one. That'll make it a 3-2 lead now after 3. So Jamie on top by 1. 10 to 2 here, Kyle. Third bag, drops them both in. Devin Harbaugh in the house, <laughs> kind of coming in behind the booth here. He's got a new baby on the way there. Jeff, four wow. more months. Harbaugh going to be a daddy. All these kids growing up right before our eyes. <laughs> they're getting married. Yeah. They're having babies. Does that mean we're old AF? I don't know. What does that mean, Jeff? Yeah, getting there. I'm ahead of you, though. <laughs> You're just old. Okay. I'm old AF. I gotcha. Round number seven here. Oh, Travis Purser just took the lead on Jamie Graham. So 6-3, Purser oh, on top, playing. round four. Oh, they started that one. I, I missed yep. it. I think it's going on uh, just, yeah, right behind this one. Aren't they down there? Yeah, they are. They're just like two courts down from us. All right, we'll oh, definitely nice give you guys some updates on that one. Shibner, I love when he does that. That, you know, you know that shot. We talked about the bags looking similar to Tony Smith's or not, but they look similar. I mean, even even the way he lands that and cuts that shot is very Tony Smith esque, isn't it? The the skip bag, Tony skip bag. Yeah, right there, that one that kind of cuts right <laughs> to left. Yeah, Tony's probably a little bit more angry. Should get a slick side push from here. He wants everything to go in for twelve. Coming in hot, big hit for Malone. He's so good right now. He's showing I've got the slick side hard push. He showed us he's got the airmail. He's showing us controlled speed with perfect blocks. It's, I, just, I just don't see anyone beating Kyle Malone right now. What sucks is this isn't going to play out today. I know. That's exactly so what I said. forward, yeah. Back when we were talking about the women's final. How bad did we want to see Shia yes. and Rosie play? So who's hot today doesn't translate to the final. Yep. They'll just have one chance at it. Got to get hot quick when we're down in Glendale. Yeah, Kyle just executing at such a high level right now. Ooh. Yeah, Roger, we've got, I, I don't know the answer, but I'm guessing we've got the college, or excuse me, the high school singles coming up next, so I think we had to push through this last yeah. few games to get onto that next tournament. So, yeah, we won't get that, uh, that Grand Purser matchup here on the broadcast. At some point in the near future, uh, probably next season, but, but I was talking to Trey about this, they're trying to get some sort of, cameras that are going to be available to put at certain courts so that we can almost do like an NFL red zone. That'd be do badass. Live looking. Yeah. That'd be Pro badass. Probably coming in the future, hopefully next year. But that, that would be great, especially in a case like this. We'd love to be able to peek in on that one. It's 6-3, to three, by the way. Purser still with a lead oh, over Jamie. Oh, six. Oh, my goodness. Whoa. And you this just one, get. This one could get over quickly. There's His line was perfect. That just goes to show the type of tilt he naturally puts on his bag and the type of bag in his hand. It's a hop bag. It's going to hop. And it just it just hopped right over the hole. Oh, wow. Why didn't he throw a slick side there? He's got a bumper he, left and right. He's been doing it. Yeah. Throw a slick side. You're guaranteed you're going to reach the hole. Oh, ugly minus two DPR right now for Shibner. Trailing by 16. Round number nine, Malone might be able to finish this one early. 
Kyle's uh, his lane just a little bit jacked up. He does have a tilt if he wants to kind of move around, and he puts a little tilt on it off to the left. This plays perfectly into the drastic right to left for Zach, and there it is. That's the back I love to see. That is so much fun to watch. I don't think you do anything crazy here for Kyle. Oh, goes after it. Unless hits you have his air mail, yeah. Yeah. Cuts that one in again. He's fine giving up two. Yep. What do we got here? A 14-point deficit. And how many rounds? Four rounds. That's tough, Jeff. That's three-plus points per round. Round number 10. Short block. Almost right in the middle of the board. Full step out outside arm. We're going to see his cut bag here. Yep. Beautiful. He wanted to be just a little bit more in the red zone. Slick side coming. Oh. Helps out Kyle. Sends his off the back. Well, actually, you know what? That could end up doing it, right? Just sitting on 18. Oh, wow. Yeah, this definitely is going to put this one away right here. And, you know, I don't think it's quite over yet, is it? It is done. No, it is, yep. So one final bag here for Kyle Malone, but this one is over. Kyle Malone puts it away. Doesn't even need 12 rounds. Kyle Malone over Zach Shibner as Kyle will advance into the Men's Singles Championship at the Pro Shootout in Glendale, Arizona. When you call it, Anthony, he is, I mean, just has been deadly. Man, I, I want to see that translate to the broadcast because he's just so hot right now. I, I feel bad if days or weeks made a difference. Uh, congrats to Kyle, though. Uh, he was actually my hot take coming into this one to win it. The dude is just throwing fire right now. Do we want to try and peek in on uh, the other one or just let everybody follow online? All right, there it is. That's about all we can get for you. So Jamie Graham and Travis Purser still in action. Jamie has now taken the lead, a two-point lead. Score just updated 8-6 to six as they are going into the eighth round. So you can follow that one online to see the conclusion of that. That'll wrap things up with our shootout coverage here from Myrtle Beach. Our thanks to Wally for running the show behind the scenes. For Anthony Ione, I'm Jeff McCarriger saying so long for just a while here from Myrtle Beach. Still a lot yet to come here this weekend. Peace.